state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. primary means by which the highway patrol achieves high-speed mobility in order to combat organized crime. A patrolman would no more abandon his car than his gun. And yet, on July 22nd, a migrant worker proceeding along Highway 15 came upon a patrol car, engine running, keys in the ignition lock, but empty. The citizen hurried to telephone his strange discovery to Highway Patrol headquarters. Check the radio log. Allard was in contact up to 12 o'clock. Well, the sergeant says he was on regular detail, no special orders. Let's find out for ourselves. Come on. Looks like he stepped out of the second to go into thin air. Uh, there's no sign of a struggle. Wait a minute. Here's something over here. Tire tracks. In a hurry to get away. Get the evidence, kid. I want an impression of these tracks. somewhere. I'll get some help. Twenty-one fifty to headquarters. Headquarters, by. Allard's car in reported position. Send someone down to check it for fingerprints. Also, all available units for search party. Send Allard's picture to the newspapers. Ask TV and radio to broadcast a description. Ten four. Ten four. Examination of Officer Allard's car had revealed nothing except that the radio was out of order. Newspapers and broadcast stations had cooperated fully, resulting in a number of false leads and an interview with Frank Hanley, a car painter. No, it couldn't have been that officer. All right, thanks very much anyway. Right. Oh, go ahead, Mr. Hanley. Now, this auto paint shop where I work, yeah, just across the street, there's a lunch wagon. Now, this officer stops there for lunch. I see his patrol car there lots of times, for around noon. In fact, I was watching for him, and when he drove up, I run over to him, and I said, there's something funny about that car, and I pointed it out. What car did you point out? The one I painted. It was just coming out of the shop then. What did the officer do? He took right out after it. Tell me, are you sure it was that officer? Oh, yes, yes. He chased it towards Highway 15. What kind of a car was it? Well... It was a 56, four-door sedan, painted light green. I painted it black. Mr. Hanley, when a car comes to your shop and you make out a work slip, do you also take down the license number? Oh, yeah. DMV, please. St. Matthews, Highway Patrol. Get me a 2829 and license number 2 Nora 57516. Repeat, 2 Nora 57516, right? Did you get a good look at the guy that picked up the car? You know, that's another reason I suspicioned him. When he'd come in, he had a bandage on one side of his face, and he kept that side towards me. Said his car needed a paint job. No, nah, that car didn't need a paint job. All right, go ahead. What a green 1956 four-door sedan. Registered to who? 
Theo Nielsen? Let me have the address, would you? Theo Nielsen Bookshop, 921 Main Street. All right, thanks very much. You've been a great help. Would you mind waiting? Oh. I'll send one of the boys in to take your statement. Yeah, sure. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Well, it looked like your car. But, Mr. Matthews, there are hundreds, perhaps thousands of autos just like mine. Not with your license plates. Now, perhaps your plates were stolen, put on a car just like yours. Ethel is very considerate. Come again? If the license plates were stolen, she wouldn't want to worry me. She'd just drive back from her holiday without any fuss and tell me when she got here. I see. When did you lend her your car? It's almost a week now. She should be back at any time. I know she's on her way back. Mr. Matthews, will my name have to be in the newspaper? Well, until we talk to your friend, there's nothing we can tell the newspapers. My bookshop, I've, I've had it here for ten years now. And my customers. I wouldn't want my name to be in the newspapers, Mr. Matthews. It would be too embarrassing. Miss Nielsen, there's a man missing. Perhaps murdered. It's horrible. Yeah. Oh, by the way, we're going to have to pick your friend up on the highway and question her. We can't wait till she gets here. Mr. Matthews. Larry. Just let us handle it, will you? They got to her first. Take it easy, George. Look, we'll do everything we can. We need your help. Headquarters at 2150. I'll keep in touch with you. All right. 2150, bye. We were on our way out of town, all free and clear, and you had to use a gun. The cop had us with her car repainted and the numbers hacked off. He wouldn't have looked for the numbers, and I could have talked her into thinking I did the new paint job for her. What about the 10,000 you talked her out of? That'd get us five to life. How are we going to cover that? Good talk, sweet talk. She's a love star. She'd give her last cent for a promise of marriage and dead. You had a corner out of a car, too. We were doing okay just lifting and selling them. No, you had to take her for everything she was worth. I had to be your brother. Boy, this time you conned us right into the hot seat. We can always shut her mouth. What if she's talked to the cops already? Look, I said, let's get out of here. And leave a witness that can hang us? And maybe she hasn't talked. Go watch that cop and signal me when he's gone. 10 4. Oh, Larry, thank heaven you called. What's the matter? Where's your brother? What is he mixed up in? Larry, a policeman was here. He says my car has something to do with the missing officer we've been reading about. Didn't he ask to look at your car? I lied, Larry. I told him I'd loaned it to a friend. Oh, uh, but you didn't lie, dear. I'm your friend. And more, I hope. Theo, the police have made a mistake because, well, you see, I've already gotten your car. Oh, Larry, you have. Thank heaven. Now, listen carefully, Theo, dear. Your auto's in a used car lot here in town. My brother sold it to the dealer. I'm going down now to buy it back for you. After all, from now on, it's going to be my job to protect you. Well, shall I call the police and tell them it was all a mistake about my car being mixed up? You don't understand, Theo, dear. The dealer has promised not to prosecute my brother if I pay for the car. Now, I want to keep the police out of this. I don't want my brother to be hurt. Neither do I, Larry. And I don't want you to be hurt either. Ah, uh, that's my girl. And now, if the police do call again, just tell them that you'll be able to show them your car tomorrow. And maybe even today. Do you trust me, Theo? Of course I do, Larry. And do you love me? Yes, Larry. And you're still going to marry me? Yes, Larry. Call you later, dear. Well, what do we do now? Uh, we'll get rid of her in the brush on top of Canyon Pass on our way out of here. How are we going to get her up there? With my brain and steadier gun. Come on, let's go.
They sure did a good job of burning this one, didn't they? They sure did. The description seems to check with the one Hanley gave us. What about the license numbers? Plates are gone. Fingerprints? Not a one. Is Dorsey here? Yeah, he's over there checking on the brush. Well, the engine number will show it's her car. No, they've been chiseled off. The body serial number has been ripped off, too. Over here! Come on. Albert. Call headquarters and get the coroner out here. Then get a tow truck. I want that burned-out job at headquarters. Dorsey. Yes, sir. That's got to be her car. Well, there's always a chance it isn't. Everything points to it being her car. You better get Miss Nielsen in again for questioning. could not be linked to the burned-out car by the numbers on the engine, body, or license plates. They had all been obliterated. Still, every circumstance indicated that she had owned the car. Miss Nielsen, I'm sorry I have to put you through all this, but I hope you understand. That's all right. All right, Miss Nielsen. You do admit you own a 1956 green four-door sedan. You say it's a couple of hundred miles away from here. Yes. I told you a friend. A witness saw your car, the license plate checked out to be yours was right here in the Springwood area. He could have been mistaken. All right, thanks very much. Now, Officer Allen chased his car to Highway 15. Two hours later, the patrol car was found empty. But there were tire tracks there. We took an impression. Now, this is the impression of his tracks and a car exactly like yours. Do you notice any difference? I don't know. There are many cars like mine. 24 hours later, 10 miles away, we found the car that made these tracks. Deliberately destroyed, burned beyond recognition. A car exactly like yours, Miss Nielsen. Well, maybe when you find the patrolman. We found patrolman Allen. He was dead, murdered. 50 yards away from the burned out car, your car. The murder car was your car, Miss Nielsen. No, no. I know where my car is. Where? I'm getting it back today. From Ethel Willoughby? No. From a friend. A man to whom I loaned it. Larry has a younger brother. Oh, I'm so confused. I don't know what to do. Could Larry's brother have? But then how could Larry promise me? Why don't you level with me? Why don't you start from the beginning? Nineteen fifty-six, light green sedan. She'll never know the difference. Especially when she sees her own license plates. Put them on. That's all I know. All I know about him. Well, Miss Nielsen, I'm sorry. I think you've been taken for a car and ten thousand dollars. I don't think it's a younger brother. I don't think you'll see Larry Gardner again either. Please. May I go now? If you hear from him, call us, will you? This is Matthews. Will you run a make on Larry Gardner? Oh, he's about 50, tall and gray. Wanted for forgery, bunco, and car theft. Check Larry Gardner, Gardner Lawrence, and Larry Lawrence. Ring it out, will you? Right, thanks.
shop. Oh, Theo, dear, where have you been? I've called you several times. I have your car. Do you really have my car? Of course. I'm looking right at it. Uh, but, Theo, the dealer wants you to sign the contract of repurchase. You'll have to come down here after you close your shop for the night. About 6 o'clock? Which dealer? Oh, the used car lot where Maine runs into Highway 15. You know the one. All right? Your car is in perfect condition. There's not a mark on it. All right. Six o'clock, Maine and the highway. Yes, dear. We'll get to her bookshop by two o'clock, just in case she changes her mind. What's that? Grand Theft Auto convicted. All right, thanks a lot. Yeah? Okay. Miss Nielsen, Mr. Matthews. He just called, Mr. Matthews. He says he has my car. Has he or, or hasn't he? No, he hasn't, believe me. We've got a report on a man who fits Gardner's description exactly. Larry Gardner, alias Harold Lawrence. Now, wait a minute, I'll get the paper here. New York, commercial auto theft. Texas. Bunko car deal, five years, state penitentiary. Illinois, auto theft, two years, state pen. There's a lot more, Miss Nielsen, a whole lot more. Miss Nielsen. Hello. Hello, Miss Nielsen. I heard. I've been a terrible fool. I won't meet him, of course. Does he want you to meet him? He says my car is in a used car lot at Maine and the highway. He asked me to meet him there. When? At 6 o'clock when I close the shop. But I won't go. I don't ever want to see him again. Well, you could help us by meeting him. But why? He's made a terrible fool of me. Robbed me. He's also suspected of murder. Does he know you've told me about him? I didn't tell him. Well, then he'll meet you. All you have to do is show at the parking lot. Then we can nab him. All right. I'll meet him. Now, you'll be well guarded. Now, act as usual. Close the shop at the usual time, then walk over to Highway 15. It's only a few blocks. And remember this. One of us will be near you at all times. All right, Mr. Matthews. Thanks. Get Dorsey and Johnson in here right away, will you? The used car lot at Maine and the highway was immediately staked out by a plainclothesman in an undercover car. A block away, concealed from the used car lot, Dan Matthews waited. Directly opposite Nielsen's bookstore, Officer Dorsey, in plain clothes and in an undercover car, maintained a close surveillance. All units were in constant communication. All necessary measures had been taken to protect Miss Nielsen and to apprehend the criminals. It was important to the plan that Miss Nielsen play her part well. I'll let you know we're here. We will be for about the next five hours. I'm parked right across the street. If you need me, just give me a sign. Say, by the way, do you have anything in early crime detection? About 1890s. Yes, I have it in the back. Most of my calls are for modern crime detection. I'll be right back. Theo, dear. Help, officer! Help, officer! Let's get out of here. Come on.
Are you all right, Miss Nielsen? Yes. Twenty-one twelve. Twenty-one fifty. Go ahead. Twenty-one twelve. Gardner and accomplice making getaway from Nielsen's bookstore, nineteen fifty-six, light green four-door sedan. Direction of suspects unknown. Ten four. Ten four. Twenty-one fifty to all units in Springwood area. Be on lookout for a nineteen fifty-six light green four-door sedan, probably on Highway fifteen. Occupants are armed and dangerous. One is Larry Gardner, age I'd say about fifty. He has one accomplice. Now thirty-two forty-four. You search east on Highway 25. 4220, search west on Highway 25. 10-4. to 21-50. Go ahead, 4248. 4248, 10 miles south of Springwood on top of Canyon Pass. 1956, light green, four-door sedan. Approximately three miles below me, Approaching from Springwood at moderate speed. And block Canyon Pass at top. Converge on Canyon Pass from east to west. I'm coming in from north. 10 4. 10 4. Bye. Suspect car has U turned, proceeding back down Canyon Pass. 10 4. He shot Allard. He pulled the trigger, you mean? All right, move. again next week. Until then, remember, leave blood at the Red Cross, not on the highway. This is Bradley Crawford saying, see you next week.
of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. and vindication of the innocent is as important to the peace officer as is the apprehension and punishment of the guilty. On August 4th of last year, the boastful wanderings of a twisted criminal mind created an unusual situation for the highway patrol. Just a moment, operator. I'll have to get some more change. Get me the highway patrol. Hurry, there's a man holding up the filling station. Highway patrol, Larrabee. Yes, ma'am? Yes, go right ahead. Can you hold on just a moment, please? Attention all units. At Carson's filling station, Orchids Road and Highway 118. A robbery taking place now. Ma'am, is he still there? He's just driving away now. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. The suspect is now leaving the scene of crime, heading north on Highway 118, driving a gray four-door sedan. License, Mary Paul Frank 686. 1440, establish a roadblock south of Frederick Junction. 1328, cover the backwood turnoff. 2410, drop down to cover roadblock on 118. 10-4. 2150 to headquarters. Go ahead. My 1020 is Lane Junction and 118. I'll cover it from the south. 10-4. 10-4. for the guy that did his roadside jobs. You think I might have gotten lucky and found him? I fooled you for a long time. I'll fool you again. Look, come on, Speck. Stop trying to fool me. What about that pack and plant job? What about that farm job you did? We used to peg you for a big shot. Right now you're doing it for peanuts. You never had me fake it, copper. You're a bunch of dumb clucks. You even sent a guy to prison for a job I did. You want me to believe that? I believe it. He'll believe it for a long time. Who is he? Find out, copper. When did this happen? A long time ago. A long... Come on, Speck. What job was it? A guy in a restaurant. What a clown. Try to grab him a gun. Let him have it, copper. I don't like to shoot. Mostly don't have to. Show them a gun and they faint. 
just a gun? Find out. Guess, copper. Guess. This couldn't be the gun. It's too new. You're a stupid copper. That gun was new ten years ago. You think we can believe him? This will get an innocent man out of jail, I'll believe it. Headquarters. Headquarters, by. Have the lab boys wait for me. I'm coming right in. Ten for. You take the car and resume patrol. I'll wait for the ambulance to make out the report. Right. from the lab and the records bureau. We have one other bullet on file that was fired from this gun. Case 11897M, taken from the body of a restaurant owner that was killed in a holdup, June 23rd, five years ago. Martin mixed up in it? No. Man named Howard Silver. Tried and convicted of the crime, sentenced to life imprisonment. Oh, he could be getting hot. Take it from the top. The restaurant was a small highway bus stop. 1146, Howard Silver drove into the parking lot in a white four-door sedan. He got out and went into the restaurant. There was nobody in there at the time except the owner and the waitress. The waitress served what Silver wanted and then went and back to prepare for the arrival of the bus due around midnight. Ten minutes later, she heard a shot from the restaurant about the time the bus was pulling into the parking lot. In the beam of the bus headlights, the driver saw a man run out, get into a four-door white sedan and drive off. He later identified that man in court as Howard Silver. They find the gun? No. What about loot? No loot. What was the bus driver's name? Jerry Reynolds. Where is he now? We're checking. Where did they pick up Silver? At a motor court down the highway. He readily admitted being in the restaurant, but denied any part of the shooting. Did Silver have a record? None. Well, that's circumstantial evidence. It's convincing, but circumstantial. Couldn't Silver have had that gun the night of the holdup? Oh, Martin told me he had this gun for ten years. You know something? I believe him. But if Speck Martin has had that gun all this time, how come bullets from it haven't shown up? Well, he said he didn't like to shoot. Most of the time, he didn't have to. Well, statistics bear him out on that. Very low percentage of holdups end up in a shooting. Could be that Silver finished his meal and took off. Then Martin came in and pulled the holdup, and that's the one the bus driver saw run into the white car. Well, at any rate, these two bullets match. Yeah, and it proved that one of them killed the restaurant owner from the same gun. Highway Patrol Larrabee. Yes, go ahead. Okay, thanks. Jerry Reynolds still driving a bus. He's on a run now. He'll be at the end of the line in 15 minutes. Stay in the layover zone 15 more. Where's the end of the line? Junction of Route 12 and Hanover Highway. We're going to have to present our evidence to see if we can get a release for Silver right away. Start things going, will you? I'm going out and talk to Reynolds. Matthews Highway Patrol. Oh, that's all right. Go right on with your lunch. I just want to ask you some questions. Tell me, five years ago, weren't you a witness to a highway restaurant robbery? Yes. Didn't your testimony send uh, Howard Silver to prison? Yes. Why did you see confirm the identification? The man himself. They reenacted the scene, you know. They had Mr. Silver run for the white car in the beam of my headlights. Do you see his face? Not very well. How could you identify him then? The attorneys had a big fight about that. I could tell by the way he ran, even if I didn't see his face. Yeah, I see. Has something else happened? Is that why you're asking me all these questions? We found the gun that killed the restaurant owner. And there must be a mistake. There's no mistake. Then, because of my testimony, 
You feel that an innocent man is serving a term in prison? Could be. Mr. Matthews, I did what I thought was right. And to be absolutely truthful, I still think I was right. You think your way, I'll take mine. I'm going to get Silver out of prison right now. Patrol obtained Howard Silver's immediate release from prison. But Matthews knew there would be adjustment problems to be met, and especially concerned would be Silver's daughter, Emily. Yes? Silver? Yes? I'm Matthews Highway Patrol. Oh, yes. Please come in, Mr. Matthews. Thank you. They told me what you've done for my father. I don't know how we can ever thank you enough. You're expecting him home today, aren't you? Yes, I'm, I'm waiting for him now. I wanted to drive up to the prison and bring him home, but he wouldn't hear of it. He wouldn't even let me meet him at the bus depot. Why not? He said he had some things to do on the way home. Well, you know, being in prison, even if you're guilty, it's pretty rough. But to be in there when you know you're innocent, that's rougher. I know, it's been tough on Dad. The last time I saw him, he was so bitter, so strange. Well, he's going to be strange and bitter when he gets home. You just be patient. It'll work out. Believe me, Mr. Matthews, I'll try with everything I have. And if you want us, call us. Thank you, Mr. Matthews. Thank you so much. Good luck. Goodbye. And thanks again. home. We're back together again. You're looking fine. I feel good. How about you? It couldn't be better. Here, let me take your hat. Oh, Dad. Well... well um, what's new? What's new? That's a silly question. Well, let's see. I got a promotion and a raise in salary last week. Good. And, oh, yes, I made the last payment on the car yesterday. The car. Is that your car parked out front? Mm hmm It isn't very new, but isn't it a dandy? Say, what are you doing home this time of day? Or is this your day off? Not as a rule, but Mr. Engel said I didn't have to report today, so I could... Oh, Dad. Baby. I've missed you so much. And I've been so lonesome. Yes, I know, and I'm sorry, honey. Day after day and year after year. Yes, I can understand that, too. And then when you wouldn't let me come and meet you, I was worried. I just couldn't reason it out. I had a reason. There were some things I had to do. Well, you could have told me. Oh, Dad. <laughs> but what am I weeping now, about? Oh, here, here. Isn't that silly? Isn't that just like a woman? Why should I cry when you're home now? That's the thing that counts. And from now on, you're the guest of honor. Thank you. I, uh, I was surprised when you sent me this address. How long have you been living here? Oh, quite a while. You didn't mention it in any of your letters or the last time you were up to see me. Oh, I know I didn't, but I didn't want to worry you. Why did you leave our lovely home and move into a little place like this? Well, I lost the house, Dad. I, I just couldn't keep it up after Mother went. Yeah, your mother wouldn't have died if they hadn't put me in prison. Well, Dad, you're not in prison now, and you and I are going to start off a new life together. Uh, what does Bob think about all this? Bob? 
Yes, Bob, the boy you're going to marry. Oh, well... You are getting married, aren't you? The last time you saw me, you well, said... Well, I thought it over, and I guess my freedom is just something I don't want to give up. You mean Bob found out your father was a jailbird? My father's not a jailbird. He never was a jailbird. And anyway, I'm much too happy to have him home to think about silly romances that didn't work out. Now then, the next thing on the program is lunch. And to coin a phrase, it's fit for a king. Be seated, King. Hello. Bus transit lines? This is the General Credit Company. A man named uh, Jerry Reynolds has applied for a loan. Uh, his application says he's employed by your company. Is that true? He is? Good. Then if we send you a questionnaire, you'll fill it out, please? Fine. By the way, is Reynolds on duty today? Uh-huh. What time? It leaves the terminal at 154? Thank you. Oh, uh, is this the bus that goes out on Century Boulevard? Thanks again. Bye. Isn't Jerry Reynolds the man who testified against you? Emily, I need some money. You're not going to go on living in the past, are you? Can't you see it's only the future that counts? No, I can't see that. But you must see it. You're free now. You have everything to live for. I have? Look, I had a successful business that I worked years to build up. It's gone. I was married to the finest woman that ever lived. She's gone. I had a beautiful home. It's gone. And my daughter has lost every chance for happiness. All this because a man lied. Because one man couldn't be honest with himself and the rest of the world. That's why I'm going to find Jerry Reynolds. And when I do, I'll kill him. You can't mean what you say. Oh, I mean it all right. I stopped on the way home and picked up a gun. You'll go back to prison. And I'll need the keys for your car. No, Dad, no. Dad, you've got to stop and think before you do anything like this. I I've waited so long for you. The Bible says if we want our sins forgiven, we have to forgive those who sin against us. Please, Dad. Emily, I'm a ruined man, and Jerry Reynolds is going to pay for it. I'm going to make him suffer for what he's done to me. You're bound to be caught. I expect to be caught. And I don't even care if I'm killed in the act, as long as I get to shoot first. So you're going to kill a man to satisfy your lust for revenge. You don't care what happens to you, and apparently you don't care what happens to me either. Emily. I've put up a front for five years because I knew you were innocent. It's no use. What am I going to do when I know you're in prison because you are a murderer? Emily, I'm sorry, but this is the way it has to be. You can't do it, Dad. You can't. You mustn't. Please. Please. Forgive me. <laughs> Dad. Operator, give me the highway patrol, please. Matthews. Mr. Matthews, this is Emily Silver. My dad took the keys to the car. He's gone out, and, and he said... What'd he say? He said he's going to kill Mr. Reynolds. What's the license number of your car? LVE-745. LVE-745. What kind is it? Uh, yellow convertible. Oh, just a minute. APB. Yellow convertible, LVE-745, driven by Howard Silver. Get his record out of the files. Right. Exactly what happened? I overheard him trying to locate Mr. Reynolds. I told him he'd go back to prison, but he said he didn't care. He said his life is ruined and there's only one thing he wants now. Revenge. Did he have a gun? Yes, he said he got one on the way home. If you hear from him, call me right away, will you? Why won't he? Why won't he be himself, Mr. Matthews? He's not acting like my dad at all. My father was a wonderful and sweet man. He just can't do this. You'll help him, won't you? Please help him. Please. We'll sure try. Get in touch with Reynolds at his house. If he's there, tell him to keep himself locked in until we get to him. I'm going to try the bus company.
Uh, thanks very much. Reynolds has left. He's a half hour out of the terminal. See, that should put him about right in here. Contact one of the units in that area. Have him get in touch with the bus. Right. How far are you going? The end of the line. 37 cents. Yeah. Forty just located the Silver's car, a short distance from the bus stop, Palmer Drive and Century. No sign of Silver. I mean, Silver's on the bus. If he is, Reynolds is in trouble. We're dealing with the guy whose motive was a revenge. He doesn't care whether he gets caught or not. Let's gamble that Silver will torment him for a while. I'm going to try and pick that bus up at first, Junction. You get his daughter out there as fast as you can. We might need her. Reynolds, much better than the one you made five years ago. Silver, I, I found out I made a mistake. I'll do anything in the world to make it right with you. You'll have to hurry, Mr. Reynolds, because you only have a few minutes left to live. Three cents. I've been in the dark for a long time. But now, everything seems light again. Can't you let him go, Mr. Matthews? He'll be all right now. I know he'll be all right. Emily, the officer has to do his duty. But this is Mr. Matthews, the man who found out about you, who worked to get you out of prison. Mr. Matthews, it, it may sound silly now if I say I'm grateful, but I am deeply and sincerely grateful. Yeah, I know you are. And I'm sorry. I'll take him away. Let's go. What will they do with him? That's up to the judge. Mr. Matthews. You know what? It's been quite a trip, and you saved my life, and I want to tell you how grateful I am. But can I pull out now? I'm way behind schedule. You sure can, if I can have my 23 cents back. My life is certainly worth more than that. 
It wasn't a few minutes ago. It's all right. See Highway Patrol again next week. Until then, remember, if you care to drive, drive with care. This is Bradley Crawford saying, see you next week. any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. Enforcement officers, the well-planned, well-executed robbery is one of the most persistent of all forms of crime and one of the most difficult to combat. In June of last year, two masked bandits with clever planning and meticulous attention to detail had succeeded in committing two armed robberies in succession and in each case had evaded the highway patrol's encirclement of the area. The third robbery resulted in the shooting of the proprietor of a check-cashing establishment. Johnson here, Dennis here, Garvey down here. Two more units, we close in the whole area. Three robberies in a row, same M.O. They always hit places that have got ready cash. Eyewitness reports carry the same description. Caps, tennis shoes, jackets, overalls, handkerchief over the face. They differ a little as to height and weight. Suspects are somewhere between 5'6 and 5'9, between 120 and 150 pounds. 150, that puts them on the short side. Any word on the wounded man? No. Matthews. Just got a hospital report on the man who was shot. He was dead on arrival. The guy that was shot just died. It's murder. This place is perfect. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Gives us a good chance to change back to women's clothes before we hit those roadblocks. Anything yet? Not a thing. 
couple of farmers I know, school bus, grocery truck, and a high school kid with a hot rod. 2150 to headquarters. Come in, 2150. Any news from the other checkpoints? All report normal traffic flow, nothing unusual. Put more units in the area. Check every parked car and all people on foot. 10-4? 10-4. My goodness, officer, what's going on? Just a routine investigation, miss. We're checking all cars. Oh, you're looking for some criminals then. Did uh, either of you two ladies see a car going at high speed or a car stop anywhere with two men in it? No, we didn't. My, isn't this exciting? Do you mind if we stay around and watch? I'm afraid, I'm afraid you can't stay here, miss. You'll have to move on. Oh, I sure would love to stay around and watch you catch them. I was the guy that was shot. He died. That's a bit they want to stay around and watch. We really hit the jackpot this time. Looks like almost a thousand dollars. Let me count it, huh? Sure. Be my guest. Boy, I'm beat. I want two units to check these factories at lunch hour. Check all men applying for work. Get me a record of all men who have gone home sick. How about a list of the men that showed up late this morning? That's a good idea. There's only two factories in this roadblock area. That's our best lead. Well, what do you think, Sal? Pretty good morning's work. That's what I think. Nearly 500 apiece. Not bad. Boy, you really have things figured out, Sally. We wouldn't last 10 minutes if I didn't. I, uh, get a big kick going through those roadblocks. Works just like I said it would. They're looking for two men. <laughs> They're going to go right on looking for two men. You know, it's not just robbery anymore if we're caught. Look, we both knew somebody was going to get hurt if we kept on. Just happened a little sooner than we expected, that's all. Boy, he dropped like a rock. Now they're going to want us for murder. Don't worry. Did you ever hear of anybody executing a good-looking woman? <laughs> Clean getaway. We had everything locked up tight. Every single person that went through that roadblock checked out. They didn't get through. What did they do? Disappear into thin air? Well, they're still inside. They've got to be. We had everything covered. They probably split up. We checked every guy by himself. What's your idea? Lunch. That waiter. Let's look him over real good. It's got to be right under our nose. Well, at least you and I can alibi each other. We were both right here when the job was pulled. Boy, I sure would like to use some of this money and get some nice clothes. Nothing doing. We stick to under $50 dresses. Let's not attract attention. What are you doing with those? We're going to do another job this afternoon. Another one of those check cashing places. The one near the Morton factory? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Boy, that ought to be a great haul. Look, Peg, I know you're in this for kicks. But do me a favor, huh? Watch the gun this time. Don't be so quick with it. Sure, I'm in it for kicks. But the money's great, too. Don't get sore. We're different, that's all. You're not doing this for the same reason I am. You think that lawyer can get Charlie out? He said it would take money. Well, I'm getting it. One way or another, I'll get him out. 
I know how you feel. I couldn't stand it if my guy was in the pen. After this one, we take a vacation. A vacation? Why, Sally? Everything's working so great. And you just said you needed the money. I've got enough money for the lawyer. He's going to reopen the case. Maybe even get a new trial. Meanwhile, we take a vacation. We're going so good. Look, that's when you quit, Peg. This is a gamble. So far, we've been winning. Comes a time when you start to lose, and we can't afford to lose. Yes, you're right. Look, we'll lay off for a month or more. Then we can always get back to work. Maybe change the setup a little. The odds will still be in our favor. You ready? Yeah. Let's go. We have the eyewitness reports. Nothing new. It's got to be somebody right in front of us. Somebody we don't suspect. A local merchant, a guy who works at the factory. Could be anybody. Either these two guys are awfully smart or awfully lucky. Sure, they're lucky. They knock over a couple of small check-cashing outfits. Have the units give them extra coverage. Do you think our two friends will go right back to work? Since when has a criminal ever had enough money? Sure, they're hit again. They feel safe now. I'll dispatch extra units to the numbered spots right away. Tell the merchants to get on the phone fast when anything happens. Never mind the license. We know they're driving stolen cars. A couple of minutes saved may give us the time we need to set up those roadblocks. I'll bet they're laughing at how easy it was to get away. Twenty-seven ten. I have a call from twenty-seven ten. He's holding two men, both riding motorcycles. Twenty-seven ten. He's at Meadowbrook intersection. Could be our suspects. Bring them in. Twenty-seven ten. Bring in the suspects. Ten four. Highway Patrol. Third and Highway 101. Thanks for calling. They've hit again. They killed a proprietor when he tried to get his gun out. This one. Well, it's not our motorcycle, boys. Release him. All right. 2340 checked that area a few minutes ago. They must have hit just after he went by. Look, we got him in a bind. I think we got it made.
<laughs> Boy, that guy thought he had us. That was the last thing he ever thought about. Every once in a while, you run into a hero. Some clown who's got to go for a gun. <laughs> Thinks the money is of more value than he is. He didn't even get a chance to get his gun out of the drawer. Why do they reach for their guns? That's our job. Matthews. We've located the hold-up car, abandoned in Kirby Lane. They found a stake-up car. Have Dennis meet me. I want to take a look. Hey, we got to be at work in 15 minutes. Well, we're just going to have to be late for work today, that's all. Driving fast now would be like waving a red flag at that roadblock. They'll stop anything going over 35 miles an hour. We're going through that roadblock, aren't we? Sure. They're still looking for two men, remember? Hey, come here. Give me a hand. What do you think? Heavy brown lead. Sort of greasy. It's a makeup or eyebrow pencil. Do you think the guy's going to use this to change your appearance? Well, if it was out here, it would be after the holdup. Yeah. How do those descriptions go again? Overalls, sneakers, caps, handkerchief over the face, about five foot six to five foot nine, 120 to 150 pounds. 120 to 150 pounds. That could be two women. Two women? Sure. And dressed the way they were, who could tell? Two women. No wonder they got through the roadblock. How smart a criminal is, he always makes at least one mistake. Peggy Banning and Sally Warren had made theirs. A lost eyebrow pencil. Something's wrong. I've just got a feeling. What's going on, officer? We're checking our cars, miss. Would you both step out, please? Would you open the trunk, please? What are you looking for? Headquarters to 2352. Excuse me. Headquarters to 2352. 2352, bye. Do not confine search to two men. Possibly two tall women are involved. Hold all suspects and report direct to headquarters. Well, I have a possibility here. A car with two tall women in it. They know. Somehow they found out. Don't worry. We're going to be out of here in one minute. Get ready, Peg. Would you uh, both get back in the car, please? Hold it right there, cop. Get his gun, Peg, quick. You'll never make it. Want to bet, copper? Twenty-three fifty-two, calling headquarters. Headquarters, bye. Two suspects disarm me. They're heading east on Route 58. 2150 is due at your 1020. I'll have to wait for him here. 10-4. 10-4. Here, 
Got any idea which way they went? No, but you might have passed them. I didn't. Stay here. They might come back. I know two women pulled the job. Let's see if they start looking for two men again. They can't be very far behind us. Don't give up, kid. We've got a chance. Maybe even a good chance. But the car, we can't use it. They know it. Look, we'll run down to the road. Stop any car that comes along. Knock over the driver if we have to. They won't be looking for two men in a car. They'll be too busy looking for two women. <laughs> Behind the house, behind the hill. Now we've got every road blocked in the area. They've got to be around in here someplace. What's that over there? An old abandoned house. Let's case it. Here comes one. Fool! Come on. We can get in trouble here. All right, spread out. I'm gonna make it running. We'll shoot it out. No, no. Look, it's, it's real thick in here. Maybe we can make them walk right by us. We'll hide. Come on, cover ourselves up with brush.
this next week. Until then, remember, no matter how new, the safest device in your car is you. This is Bradley Crawford saying, see you next week. Any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. in which acts of violence erupt suddenly without motive or purpose, poses an endless and dangerous puzzle for law enforcement agencies. But the case of Fred Carter was doubly dangerous, for this man used apparently pointless vandalism to mask a sinister motive and a deadly purpose. What appeared to be random sniping at passing cars was in reality a carefully contrived pattern for murder. Please. Highway Patrol, Larrabee. Yes, ma'am. What's your name, please? When did it happen, Miss Cooper? I see. Where are you now? Uh huh. Can you hold on just a moment, please? Is that another sniping at Wellsburg? Oh, fine. That makes number eight, doesn't it? Apparently, doubling up patrol in that area didn't make much impression. We'll have to impress him a little harder, that's all. Tell Miss Cooper to wait where she is. I want to talk to her. Here's your location. Thanks. Yes, this is the spot. I stopped. I stopped right here, I think. Well, let's see. You're going 35 miles an hour. Takes 78 feet to stop. Another second to apply the brakes, that's another 38 feet. Yeah, I guess you'd stop about right in there. So he was hiding in there somewhere, anywhere. Did he shoot the others from there, too? No, that'll be too easy. Seven cars have been hit so far. You're number eight. The only pattern is the former circle around Wellsburg. The shell cases we found all come from the same gun. Then it's someone in Wellsburg. And he's playing it real careful. You know, we could retire before we'd finish combing his brush. We'd better check all the farmers in the area. There's anybody who owns a 22. Practically every family in the area owns one. Standard equipment on a farm. Yeah, I know. Take Miss Cooper back to the car. Check the three farms at the cutoff. I'll go the other way. Thanks, Miss Cooper. Good luck.
Matthews, Highway Patrol. May I come in? Sure. about the snipings in the past few days? I sure have. One of them happened near your place. See anybody with a rifle? No, no, I didn't. But I thought it might be the same lad we caught shooting the insulators off our telephone poles last year. Who was that? Well, I dropped in on his parents last evening, and the boy couldn't have been the same one. So I'd rather not mention his name. No use making trouble. Why don't you let us run the investigation? That happens to be our job. Well, that's the way I am, Mr. Matthews. I see something going wrong, and I just have to set it right, if I can. I don't like to see anybody flaunt the law or take unfair advantage of another person. That's the way I am. Mm-hmm. Anybody to live here with you? No, not since my sister died. I'm a bachelor. But if I get to the bottom of these shootings, I'll certainly let you know. Thanks. It won't be easy, you know. Everybody around here knows how to use a gun. No, not quite. Somebody knows how to aim one and pull a trigger. There's a difference. Who's got the next farm? Fred Carter. Well, Jim. Hi, Mr. Larkin. Still figuring on staying around here? How's my credit? Credit? Look, I've been on that farm of mine, or what's left of it, for five days, pulling up the weeds. I intend to stay with it, but I've got to have some credit. No, I don't know, Jim. I served my time in prison. Now I'm trying to start over. Well, you were a bad risk long before you went to jail, Jim. I'm asking you for a break. Well, you prove to me that you've learned your lesson and maybe we can work something oh, out. Oh, never mind, Mr. Larkin. Wait a minute, Jim. If it's the grub steak you want or a few potatoes or a few beans, I'll always help you, Jim. Now, keep it. Matthews, Highway Patrol. You Carter? Yeah? I oh, was checking on the snipers. Been operating in this area. Shot was fired from your land the other day. Well, I, I met you, man. I, I don't own a gun. Even if I did, I couldn't hit a broadside of a barn. But come on in. Thanks. Do you happen to see anybody in this area with a rifle today? You mean boys? Well, anybody. We are looking for boys, aren't you? Well, why should I? Well, you know how boys are. Sure, I know how boys are, but that doesn't make them snipers. Well, grown men wouldn't go around shooting at cars. You'd be amazed how many middle-aged juvenile delinquents there are. Hey, you live here alone? Well, yeah. Nice-looking girl. Yeah, I, I almost married her, but well, she changed her mind. That's too bad. So you figuring this sniper to be a grown man kind of worries me. Yeah. My own car was hit this morning, you know. Why didn't you report it? Well, I was just on my way to town when you drove up. You want to see it? Yeah, I'd like to. There it is. Where'd it happen? Well, about a mile or so down the road. I thought my tire had picked up a rock. Didn't know it was a bullet till I got home. Now, if you see anybody with a gun, let us know, will you? I sure will. Thanks.
morning, Emmett. Oh, good morning, Herb. What can I do for you? Need a sack of feed. Okay. Say, your friend Purcell was in. Wanted me to extend him some credit. Can you beat that? Well, his place is awful run down. Listen, next time he comes in, if he needs help, tell him to see me. Look, Herb, you don't owe him anything. When you identified him, you were doing your duty. It isn't your fault he went to jail. It's his. I know. But, well, I'd like to see him get started right. Well, it's your funeral. Morning, Fred. Morning, Herb. Morning, Fred. Anything else, Herb? The wire mine come in yet. No, but it should be in this morning. Well, I'm going to the post office. I'll stop at the barber shop. You call me, huh? I'll, I'll be home about noon. Okay, Herb. Right. Bye-bye. How'd it go? Couldn't find out a thing, you? I don't get it. Nobody's seen anything suspicious in the past four days. I'll stay with it. You resume patrol. Twenty-one ten to twenty-one fifty. Twenty-one ten to twenty-one fifty. Twenty-one fifty by. There's been another sniping. This time the driver's dead. <laughs> sprawled behind the wheel of his pickup truck, the vicious potential hazard inherent in the snipings had become a reality. As Matthews arrived on the scene, he realized that because what looked like vandalism had not been stopped in time, he now had to catch a killer. Mr. Dunlap, one of the farmers I talked to. I've sent for the lab boys. Did you notice from the position of the wound, it looks like he was hit from almost straight on. Yeah, but he could have had his head turned. Take a look at his windshield. Judging from that, the bullet came in slightly from the left. He must have died instantly. Yeah, and turned the wheel as he fell over. I'm going up the road approximately where he was hit. You get up there, see if you can get a beat on me. Big line on you from here. The grass is matted down. I figure that's where you waited. There's a heel print over there and a part of another here. That's a real nice spot. A little different from all the others. How do you mean? The others were a little off to the side. And this one, the traffic hits you head on. We're not looking for a sniper who got careless. We're looking for a guy who deliberately committed murder. Take a look here. 
That shell could be from the same gun. Get a cast of those heel prints, too. Get your stuff at Larkin's feed store. Probably on his way home. I'm going to the store and talk to the people there. You wait for the coroner and lab men, then meet me. Mr. Larkin? Yes? I'm Matthews, Highway Patrol. Yes. Tell me something. Who wrote this up? Well, I did. For Herb Dunlap. But how did you get it? Something wrong? He's dead. Herb dead? Why? What happened? He was shot by a sniper on the highway. Oh, I can't believe it. How long have you known him? Most of my life. Did he have any enemies? Oh, not Herb. He got along with everybody. Why, he was as helpful almost to a fault. Why, I don't think there's a person in the world who... Wait a minute. One man might have a grudge against him. Oh? Who was that? Jim Purcell, a bad apple. What about the grudge? Well, Purcell held up a lumber yard and Herb saw it. Purcell was sent up for four years because Herb identified him at the trial. Otherwise, he would have gone free. Is he still in prison? No, he just get out. He came back to town on the bus about five days ago. Where can I find him? Well, he has a little farm out on the cutoff. Thanks, Mr. Larkin. You're welcome, sir. How'd it go? I only got a man with a motive. I brought the cast of that heel print in. I thought you might need it on this end. Let's check it now. Mr. Larkin. Yes, sir. Here's a cast of the heel print found at the scene of the crime. Why, that looks like the heel of a work shoe that I stock. Got a pair handy? Yes, I have. There you are, sir. Thanks. There's no doubt about it. Any other store in town carry the shoe? No, I'm the only one in the area. So goodbye, too. It sells for 540. Anybody buy a pair in the past few days? Yes, Jim Purcell, about five days ago. Jim Purcell. Let's go. Thanks, Mr. Larkin. Purcell? Word got around real fast, didn't it? The black sheep's in town. Better get the cops out there. All right, come on. Let's go inside. Look. I got work to do. I haven't got time to talk to you. Take time. It's important. Okay, what do you want? You know a guy by the name of Dunlap? Herb Dunlap? Sure. This town's my home. I know them all. He testified at the trial, didn't he? That's right. And you probably won't mind hearing that he's dead. You're kidding me. Somebody shot him. Know anything about it? Oh, me? No. Why should I? Four years in jail is a good reason. Okay, so I paid the state there four years. I haven't seen Dunlap since the trial. Are those the shoes you bought at Larkin's five days ago? Sure, why? Show me your foot. What? Sit down and hold up your foot. Could be close enough. Yeah. You got a 22 rifle on the place? That's all I need. Me and ex-con with a gun? Look around outside. Where were you at noon today? Right here. Prove it. Ah, oh, you know I can't prove it. I never should have come back here. Every little thing that goes wrong. This is no little thing. It's murder. Oh, 
Oh, sure. That's going to have my prints all over it because I handled it. I found it here just before you got here. I don't know who put it there or how it got there. Look, I swear I never saw it before. But you're not going to believe me, are you? Not for one minute. Just called. There's some discrepancies between the heel of Purcell's shoe and the cast of the print. Anything ballistics? Not yet. Highway Patrol, Larrabee. Not yet. Purcell's still sticking with his story. I've been down in the lab. They've been running a series of tests on that rifle. The slug that killed Dunlap wasn't fired from this gun. You sure? Positive. They've been turning slugs under that microscope for an hour. Funny thing is, that shell case we found did come from the gun. Then it was planted. That's the way I figure it. Let's take a ride. Mr. Larkin. Yes, sir. We were wrong. Yeah? Purcell didn't kill Dunlap. No, who did? We don't know. Anybody in here with Dunlap today? Why, yes. Uh, Fred Carter came in while Herb was here. Now, think. Anybody else buy a pair of those work shoes lately? Well, uh, about four days ago, Fred Carter did. Now, surely you don't think Fred. Why, Fred and Herb have been good neighbors for years. How'd they get along? Well, pretty well, uh, but not so well lately since Herb's sister died. Why should that make a difference? Well, she came out from the East and Fred started courting her and Herb didn't think that Fred was, you know, sort of the right man. He was pretty stubborn about it, too. So she finally left, went back East, and she died about a year ago. Left quite a lot of money, too. To her brother? Yes, but is that a motive for a murder? We don't know yet. Thanks. Yes, a terrible thing. That ex-convict Purcell. He had nothing to do with it. Somebody framed him because he was an ex-con. Bought shoes exactly like his, did a little sniping to confuse things. Left a shell case and heel prints at the scene of the crime, then planted a gun at his house. But who would do a thing like that? Let's start with the shoes. Lockett said you bought them. Are you accusing me? I want to see him. Well, this is ridiculous. Why? Herb Dunlap was my neighbor, my friend. Stood between you and the girl you wanted to marry, didn't he? Well, that was a long time ago. I bugged you, he wanted him dead. When he came back, he saw your chance. But, but I, I was a victim of the sniper. My own car was hit. Yeah, you stood back about ten feet and shot a hole in your own car. Even angled it down so it wouldn't hit the motor. Locked. Radio for help. I'm going after him. Be careful. He's probably not armed. This is a foot race. Oh, the car, you're under arrest. Only a foot race, huh? Well, now we know where the murder weapon is. Can you see him? No. Rather than use this from this distance, I might as well throw rocks at him. Yeah, he's really got us outclassed when it comes to weapons. I don't know. Use both hands on that pistol of yours and take plenty of time. But he can get off three good shots before I get a line on him. Well, I'll tell you what you do. Zero men. I'm going to circle around trying to convince him he's covered from both sides. When he turns my way, nail him. Come oh, on, do me a favor. Don't miss. Sergeant, he's behind those bricks over there. Let's rush him. I'll take it first.
I'll get an ambulance. Oh, by the way, he qualified with that pistol of yours this month. See Highway Patrol again next week. Until then, remember, it isn't what you drive, but how you drive that counts. This is Broderick Crawford saying, see you next week. Whenever the laws of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. Patrol deals chiefly with events that fall into two main categories, crimes and accidents. In most cases, the distinction is clear-cut. In a few instances, however, pure chance or the cleverness of a criminal may mask the true character of a tragedy. Early on the morning of September 18th, William Foster drove to a mountain cabin where his senior partner, Thomas Corbin, was recuperating from a long illness. Oh, it's you. Surprise you, didn't I, Tom? I decided last night to come up and see how you're getting along. Well, come in. Hey, it's awfully damp in here. Why didn't you have John build a fire? John isn't here. He went into the village to get supplies. That's why I didn't see your car. Well, I'll start a fire. No, don't bother. I'm just going out for a walk. Fine. The fresher after that rain last night will do your world of good. Tom, you're looking great. Well, should we go for that walk? Well, Tom, what's the matter? Are you prepared to give me a complete report of this oil drilling operation? Well, Tom, you've read all the correspondence with Northwest Drilling Company. You've seen pictures of the progress. What more can I do? They're fakes. Fake pictures. There is no Northwest Drilling Company. <laughs> oh, stop acting. All it took was a couple of phone calls to expose your rotten scheme. Phone calls? To whom? One to the Northwest Drilling Company main office at Thadwell. The phone company had no listing of this big concern. The other was to a state agency. No such concern is operating in this state. But don't worry, Foster. I haven't told anyone else about this. Not even my attorney. That's awfully good of you, Tom. I appreciate... You appreciate. That's a joke. A very funny joke. You've had every chance to come through and admit what you've done. Tom, please, listen. I've been ready to listen, waiting. Now you listen to me. From this moment on, our partnership is dissolved. I'm seeing my attorney Monday morning. You've had every chance to come clean, and now you're going to take the consequences. You and anyone else in the organization that helped you pull off this fraud. There, there isn't anyone else. I can hardly believe that. Surely someone in the auditing department must have known about it. No. I took care of all the angles personally. You're clever. Now I'm going to tell you just how clever you are. For the sake of a few thousand dollars, you've cheated yourself out of the chance of inheriting a million-dollar business. In my will, my daughter was to receive half the profits of the company. 
you the other half, and complete control of the firm. But Monday, I'm changing that will. Tom, I'll make it good. Give me another chance. Get out. I can't blame you, Tom. I've only got one way out. When I take it, don't blame yourself. Goodbye. Yes, sir. I see. Yes, sir. Yes, well, just a moment, please, sir. A man named William Foster says he shot his partner. He's pretty upset. He's on fire. Thanks. It's Matthews. All right, all right. Take it easy now, will you? Look, you sure the man's dead? No, I understand. Yeah, I know. It's an accident. But where are you now? At a grocery store where? Crown Ridge Highway, one mile east of Sutter Flats. All right, wait for us there. Corbin and I were walking up the road. I had my rifle. I saw a deer. Mr. Corbin was tired. He's been very ill for several months. I suggested that he wait by the road while I stalked the deer. I thought he'd wait there. 
About a half an hour later, I've been working around trying to get upwind of this deer all the time. I heard a movement near the thicket. A moment later, there was a rustling in the thicket. Well, I, I was about 100 yards away at the time. I saw the brush move and I fired. When I saw what had happened, I... That's when you called us. You say Corbin's been pretty sick. What's he doing out here in the woods? Well, he has a cabin not far from here. As I told you, he was recuperating. Anybody else at the cabin? No. Not now. His male nurse went in town for supplies. Look, do I have to... No, you go ahead in the car. Wait for me. What do you think? Well, every year during hunting season, we get these. Strangers shoot strangers, brothers shoot brothers. Accidents. This foster, he shoots his partner, drives five miles to call us, we find the victim in a thicket. Suppose he hadn't called us. How long would it have taken us to find Corbin? Weeks, maybe months, maybe never. You wait here for the evidence. Probably want this. I sure do. Where's Corbin's cabin? About a quarter mile up. He couldn't walk any farther in his condition. Who's Corbin's next to kin? His daughter, Phyllis. She's married. Lives in Radford. Mrs. Brian Chadwick, 4459 Cedar. You want to tell her? I'd rather not. Okay, I'll take care of it. You can go now. You're not holding me? No, you call us. If we want you, we know where to find you. Miss Graham? You'll probably be getting inquiries from the newspaper reporters. You have? Uh-huh. You did exactly right. Thank you. Now, please listen carefully. I'm on my way into the office. I should be in there in less than an hour. You tell the reporters I'll meet them at 11 o'clock. Thank you, Miss Graham. After the ambulance and laboratory experts arrived at the scene of the supposed accident, the highway patrol proceeded to carry out the painful but necessary duty of informing the victim's daughter, Phyllis Chadwick. Mrs. Chadwick, I'd like to talk to you about your father. My father's dead, isn't he? Yeah, I'm sorry. I thought he was getting better. You see, he was shot. No. It was an accident, a, a hunting accident. A, a hunting accident? Tell me, how well do you know William Foster? Not very well, actually. Why do you ask? Well, Foster reported the accident. He said he was out deer hunting, heard a noise in the thicket, and he fired. He thought your father was quite a distance away. I, I can't believe it. What was my father doing out there? Well, he'd gone for a walk with Foster, and Foster had his rifle with him. My father never went hunting in his life. He wouldn't even go around with anyone who carried a gun. He couldn't bear to see any living thing killed. You sure of that? I guess I just don't want to believe it happened. It's just too horrible to think about. They were such good friends. And... Well, what about Mr. Foster? You're not going to... Oh, we're not going to hold him. The only evidence we have is that it was an accident. Well, thanks very much for your cooperation. We'll be in touch with you again. Of course, Mr. Matthews. <coughs>
jester or something makes your story sound phony. Let's find Proctor. The absence of other witnesses or contradictory evidence left the highway patrol with no reasonable alternative but to accept the admission of William Foster that Corbin's death was accidental. However, the later questioning of Corbin's daughter gave the highway patrol cause to doubt the accuracy of Foster's account of the tragedy. Matthews informed William Foster that Corbin's daughter had been told the circumstances of her father's death. She must be very bitter towards me. Well, as a matter of fact, she is, and she said you and Corbin were great friends. We were. I owe Tom Corbin a great deal. Did you go hunting together often? No. I... I usually went alone. Corbin didn't approve of hunting. Well, if he didn't approve of hunting, what'd you take your rifle along for? Uh, I like the feel of a gun in my hands, Mr. Matthews. Or rather, I did. And I certainly didn't expect to see a deer. Well, I won't bother you anymore. Perfectly all right. Please tell your men they're welcome at any time. Thanks very much. Tell the straight story. You can't cop it into going along with him. Well, you figure he's clear then? Well, let's figure a coroner's jury would say negligence. That means they're both involved. Let's see what the lab boys come up with. I have uh, triple-checked those figures, uh, but if you want, I'll go over them again with you. No, thanks. Bill, you've been through an ordeal. Why don't you go on home? I can handle things here. Thanks. I'd, I'd rather keep busy. Sure. I understand. Oh, I've uh, promised Mr. Matthews full cooperation. They may want to check the books. Anything you say. Here's a medical report. Death instantaneous, caused by destruction of a heart and a lung tissue by bullet from a .30-06 rifle. No powder marks on clothing or body. Anything else? Nothing conclusive, but the lab did run into something a little puzzling. There what? There was mud on the victim's face, jacket, and pants, and on the soles and toes of his shoes. There has to be mud around there. After all, we waded through it. But Corbin's soles, the insteps were dry, almost clean. The question is how? Yeah, I know. How did Corbin walk through without getting any mud in his shoes? He must have been carried there. Any other marks or injuries on him? Nothing. But right, then he was carried. But Foster admits the shooting. Nobody knew he was up at the cabin. Why didn't he just leave the body in the thicket and get away? Why don't we let him tell us? You gonna bring him in? No, not yet. No jury could convict him on circumstantial evidence. We need a motive. And that could be tough. Everybody we've questioned says they were good friends. Foster's a pretty good hunter. I don't think he'd shoot blindly into a thicket just if he heard a noise. The lab boys are pretty sure Corbin wasn't killed in the thicket. Well, he must have been killed someplace else. I keep thinking about him, too. The way he looked the last time I saw him. Yes. It was about a month ago. We went out to his home with some contracts. No, this was just recently, when Corbin came in the office. Tom was in the office? When? Wednesday. I remarked then how well he looked. He asked for you, but you were out. He wanted to see some of the books and look at the correspondence on the Northwest Drilling Project. Did he make any comment? No, but he took some of the records out of the office with him. Did they return? He intended to study them up at the cabin over the weekend. That isn't a very safe place for them, an empty cabin. Well, I suppose not. I'll send up for them right away. I'll go. I know the layout. I see. All right. That's fine, Mr. Marlowe. Thank you. If we want anything else, we'll call you. Right. Goodbye. I just talked with Corbin's attorney and Mr. Marlowe. Very cooperative. Anything at all? Corbin and Foster were very good friends. In fact, Corbin recently revised his will, leaving everything to his daughter and William Foster. When the will's probated, Foster will assume complete control of the firm. Well, that could be the motive. But 
Marlowe was quite insistent that Foster did not know about the will. He claimed Corbin wanted it kept secret until he could tell Foster himself which he was going to do when he was well enough to return to the office. Well, maybe Corbin told Foster about it after all. He's trying to cover something up, that's certain. Maybe he's going to try and cover some more. I think we ought to have another talk with him. I'll meet you at the car. Matthews was informed by the controller that William Foster had left on business. Again, Matthews was assured that the two partners had no personal or business disagreement. And when did you ask you the two of them together? Together? Mm-hmm. About a month ago. Then there's nothing that you know of that's come up recently. Not positively, of course. But I see Mr. Foster every day, and if there was any trouble, I'd know. You haven't seen Corbin in what, about a month? He was in just the other day. I had occasion to go over some figures with him for about an hour. There was no indication of any difficulty then. Well, Foster tells me that Corbin hasn't been in the office in weeks. Oh, Mr. Foster was out of the office at the time. He evidently didn't know about Corbin's visit until just a while ago. That's why Mr. Foster's gone back up to the cabin. Oh, he's up there now? He's on his way. You see, I gave Mr. Corbin some papers and correspondence to study over the weekend. And Foster went after him? Why, yes. They represented a rather sizable investment. And Mr. Foster and I didn't uh, feel that a deserted cabin was a safe place for them. Foster's up there alone? Yes, put him on. Excuse me. Sure. Yes, this is Mr. Edwards speaking. Uh, may I help you? Well, the bank's records must be an error. We never permit that account to drop below the minimum. Now, uh, just a moment. I had occasion to check the records on that account just today. There is on deposit over $6,000. A cash withdrawal of $4,000? By whom? Oh, by Mr. Foster. Oh, I see, yes. Well, uh, thank you very much. I'll arrange a transfer deposit from another account on uh, Monday morning. Thank you. Excuse the interruption, Mr. Matthews. Uh, was there anything else? No, that'll be all. Tell Foster I was here, will you? I certainly shall. Thanks very much. There's something in Corbin's cabin Foster wants where anybody else gets to it. He's got four grand. Now, he can go a long distance on that. We'll get an APB out on him. 2150 to him.
Well, what is it now, Mr. Matthews? We want to ask you some more questions. I promise to cooperate, but honestly, this continued harassment... Uh, I'm sorry. I, I guess you understand I, I've been under quite a strain. Yes, sure, we know. I came up to pick up some business correspondence and some records. Do you mind giving them to us? Well, really, they're of no significance to anyone outside the firm. They're merely records I didn't want anything to happen to. Well, we'll make sure nothing happens to them. All right. In the front seat. After all, I won't be needing them immediately. Well, is that all, Mr. Matthews? I mean, I'd like to get back to the city before dark. Yeah, sure, you'll make it. And don't worry about the four grand you're carrying. What are you talking about? We're trying to figure out how Corbin could have walked through the mud and kept his shoes clean. Next week's case handled by the Highway Patrol is a very exciting one. We hope you'll be with us. Until then, remember, the careless driver isn't driving his car. He's aiming it. This is Roderick Crawford saying see you next week. of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. Penal institutions take every conceivable precaution against any dangerous action or plan on the part of the inmates. But on May 8th at Rendell State Prison, the sudden collapse of a guard due to a heart attack made possible the escape of two women since the strategic point was left unguarded. Two women who were both serving a life sentence for murder. Shortly after their escape was discovered, the two women, Lita Morgan and Carolyn Craig, reached a state highway where they knew they must obtain immediate transportation out of the area if they were to make good their escape. It's a road. We got a lucky break, man. What are we gonna do with it? Before long, every cop in the state's gonna be looking for us. We, we knew that when we took off. First thing we gotta do is put distance between ourselves and this neighborhood. Hey, maybe we could uh, borrow the next car that comes along, <laughs> provided it's driven by a man and, and he's alone. <laughs> what I was thinking. Yeah, well, we need a lot of other things. We gotta, we gotta get some clothes and money, and and a, you know, I like a gun just in case. Yeah, we gotta take first things first. We don't want to wind up in solitary. The first thing for us to do is get some transportation. Yeah. Oh. <sighs> Attention, all units. Attention, all units. A Rental State Prison reports two escapees, zero nine seventeen hours. Described as Lita Morgan, female, 5'3", brown hair, brown eyes, serving life sentence for murder. Also, Carolyn Craig, female, 5'4", blonde, serving life sentence for murder. Both girls in late 20s, both dressed in prison uniform. Let's take a look at that map. Hey, 
terrors in state prison for women three miles north of the town of Rendell. Well, we're going to have to set up roadblocks north and south of Rendell. Of course, they have transportation. They can be passed there by now. Yeah, take a look here. An open mile stretch for about 20 miles. Next town north is Baylor. Yeah. 2150 to headquarters. Headquarters by. Set up roadblocks north and south of Leader. Also one five miles south of Baylor. Another 10 miles south of Leader. Contact records for pictures of the escapees and furnished all units. 10 4? 10 4. Let's check that Leader territory. Hey, there's a car coming. I think he's alone. Hello there. What's the trouble? Well, I was looking for a service station with a mechanic, but it looks like I'm walking in the wrong direction. I'm afraid you are. There isn't a real good mechanic between here and Swinton. Well, how far is Swinton? Not far. I'd be glad to give you a lift. Oh, boy, my feet tell me that's the best offer I've had all day. Okay, hop in. Say, that dress you're wearing, isn't it a... Hey, stop it! Stop it! Come on, stop it. Well, maybe we better tie him up or something. I don't think we got a bother. He's dead. You sure? Positive. Well, let's get him out of here. Come on. Any leads yet? Nothing. We've combed this whole area. All we've drawn so far is blanks. Did you get the pictures? Yeah, the helicopter dropped them ten minutes ago. Here's an extra set. I'm positive those two girls haven't gone through here. Thanks. Wouldn't we be better off with a dress shop? Uh-uh. Cops know we'll go for clothes. They probably called every dress shop in the neighborhood. Okay. I sure would like a new dress. Anybody here? Coming. Hello, may I help you? Yeah. You can help us, lady. Ouch! Now, lady, listen here. You get back there, face down, and you keep your mouth shut, and you won't get hurt. Now, get out. I mean, now. Well, it's sure better than that prison outfit, huh? Looks fine. Here, I got a coat for you. Oh, good. And we'll go to that hardware store down the street. What for? Guns. We gotta get guns. Huh. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Headquarters to 2150. 2150, bye. 4210 reports body of man found just off Highway 16, miles south of Rendell Prison. Apparent victim of recent attack. Well, that could be our girls. We're on our way. 10-4? 10-4. Hey, Mr. Was Anthony Faber lived in Baylor. The uh, license number is here on the credit card. Twenty-one fifty to headquarters. Headquarters by an APV on a car bearing license two Boston six eight three. Type and make unknown. If you pick it up, all the occupants could be our escapees. Ten four. Ten four.
we stopping for? I thought we needed distance. See that bus over there? Come on and bring the map with you. I got an idea. Oh, why? We're doing fine. The cops will stop us in a car. But I got plans for that bus. Excuse me, sir. Uh... Hello, uh... Hello. Uh, what time does the bus leave? Right now. And uh, how far does it go? To the county line just south of Swinton. Oh, well, thank you very much. If you're much. going, you better get aboard right now. Thanks. Forty cents, please, if you're going to the end of the line. Charge it. What? I said, charge it. Now get this thing going and keep it going. Look, must be a picture of his wife and kids. I think we've got a couple of first-class suspects in those two women escapees. Headquarters to 2150. Headquarters to 2150. 2150 by. Clerk in hardware store at Leader slugged by two women who then stole two guns and ammunition. Clerk shot when he attempted to prevent escape of assailants. Bystander identified getaway car as vehicle. Described in last APB. 10-4. 10-4. Looks like that pins the murder of favor on the two gals. We better check leader again. Yeah, they should be someplace between here and there. People that are waiting for the bus. Skip them. You just keep driving till we tell you to stop. Hey, wait a minute. Let me think. If we do have to go through a roadblock, it's gonna look mighty funny with this empty bus. How many people do you usually pick up between here and Swinton? Twenty-five or thirty, sometimes more. Well, you know, I think we ought to have a couple of passengers on this bus. Is that a bus stop up ahead? Yes, it is. There are a couple people waiting there. You stop and pick them up. Look, that's Lynn Brady and his wife. Can't, can't we leave them alone? You heard her. Now you stop and pick them up or we'll be picking up your pieces. Sure, sure, sure. I'll stop. Never mind the fare, mister. You're going to get a free ride. Now, you just sit down and do what you're told. You, by the window. Go on. Go on. on. Okay, sister, you sit next to him. Now, you just behave and you do what you're told and maybe you'll live through this. And I said maybe. Okay, mister. Get this thing moving. <laughs> The only clue picked up so far by the highway patrol was the license number of a car which apparently belonged to the murdered man. The two escapees were now armed with stolen guns, weighing their chances of getting through the roadblock in the bus. If this move was successful, freedom might lie just on the other side of the highway patrol roadblock. That was a cop's car. Oh, whatever, they don't know we're on the bus. Oh, that means there'll be a roadblock up ahead. There is. This bus is going to have to go through it. Hey, Mr. Bus Driver, I'm telling you right now, if there is a roadblock, we're going through it with or without shooting.
them come through here. We haven't seen the women or the car they're supposed to be driving. Well, that means one of two things. They either ditch the car, they're trying to get around us. They can't get around us as they go through the Davis Pass. That's block two. Contact the roadblock at Davis Pass. Give them the information we got. Right. You know our boy's right. Davis Pass is the only way out of Rendell. Well, there's a dirt road south of here that goes over to Highway 302, but they'd have to come by here to get to the road. It's a negative report from the Davis Pass block. Headquarters to 2150. Headquarters to 2150. 2150, bye. Dress shop and leader also held up and robbed by two women suspects. Loss includes money from cash drawer, a purse, and apparently several dresses. Describe the dresses. Not available until proprietress checks. 10-4. We're in good shape. Now we don't know how to dress. There it is, kid. Now listen, mister. There's a roadblock up ahead, and whether you live another 10 minutes or whether you don't depends on whether we get through it. And same goes for you, too. So put on a real good act if you won't ever put on another one. I'll take it. Hello? Hi. What's the matter? You haven't noticed two women together anywhere along the road. No, no, I haven't. Have you had any women passengers that got off before you reached here? No, only these two passengers today. These two women escaped from Rendell this morning. Now, if you happen to see two women together, if you see this license number, 2B683. Be sure and call a highway patrol. I sure will. Hey, thanks for stopping. Don't mention it. You know, I'm not so sure about that bus. I don't see they can afford to run it with only two passengers. Wouldn't even pay the driver's salary. Is it always like that? Well, I'm not sure, but I do know that bus doesn't run very often. And every time I've ever passed it, it's been crowded. You better check it, Ken. Could mean something. The thing to do now is to get off this highway as quick as we can. Look, there's a road here that goes over the Highway 302. It can't be far from here. Hey, mister, there's a road up there to your right. Take that road when you come to it. That's a narrow dirt road, a, a lot of turns. I don't think the bus can make it. Mister, you make that turn. Headquarters to 3016. 3016, bye. A bus in question usually carries 25 or more passengers. Today, bus company deluged with calls from passengers complaining. Bus did not stop to pick them up. 10-4. Let's check that bus again. Something screwy. We should have passed that bus by now. How about that turn off to 302? I uh, will try it. Have a unit covered from the south. Follow me. better off. 
off on this highway than we were on the one we just left. Unless we can find some way to fix these people on this bus so they won't be found for a while. But forget the people. Where do we hide the bus? I don't know if we can hide it. We can sure keep our eyes open for a good spot. Okay, here's where we split. Go on, pick your direction and good luck. Look, if we get out of this, go to Chicago and look up Gus Daniels. Tell him you're a friend of mine. Oh, okay, Chicago. I'll remember that. Oh, I'll, I'll go this way. Oh, see you in Chicago. We got off the bus about a hundred yards back, right by that opening in the fence. All right, let's go. You take this one. Come on. 
You're surrounded. You don't have a chance. Come on, Carolyn. You better give up. Okay, you guys. Come on. All right, drop the gun. Hands behind you. Okay, let's go. Highway Patrol again next week. Until then, remember, it isn't what you drive, but how you drive that counts. This is Bradley Crawford saying, see you next week. state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. is always a factor in law enforcement, something which is sharply pointed up by the scattered and seemingly endless areas which come under the jurisdiction of the highway patrol. With such a large area to cover, routine inspection tours are a necessity. On April 12th, while making such a tour, the head of the highway patrol came upon a hitchhiker. Not an ordinary hitchhiker, for this one was a doctor. He was also on a routine tour. No emergencies except a broken down car. Just a series of house calls, apparently of a minor nature. But the father of the first patient feared otherwise. How long ago did Doc leave, Mrs. Leonard? I see. No, he hasn't called. Do you think I had a... Well, all right, I'm sure he will. Sorry to trouble you. What did she say? Doc left a long while ago. Should be here by now. I don't know. Look, Fred, Johnny will be fine. Kids are tough. You're getting all excited about nothing. Well, it doesn't look that simple to me. Now, don't go getting yourself upset. Doc will show. You'll see. Oh, Fred. Uh, what I was talking about, uh, the money. I know this isn't the right time, but... Fred. I've got a sick kid in the other room. I don't know what's wrong with him. I don't know where the doctor is. And all you can talk about is borrowing money. Thanks. It's just an advance against my wages. You're taking advantage, Marty. You wouldn't do it if you worked for anybody else. I swear, I'll pay it back. Like all the other times? You can take it out of my wages. You know how far behind you are now. What is it with you and money, anyway? You get a lot more than any other foreman, and you know it. Still, you're always scratching. What do you do with your money? Please, Fred. Fred. 
I'm sorry. I guess I'm taking it out on you because I'm worried about Johnny. Here. Thanks. This time, it's just a loan. You'll see. Sure. I better see how the boy is. How you feeling, Johnny? The leg any better? All right, Pop. Fine. Is it any worse? A little bit. It's nothing. Honest. Doc Leonard ought to be here real soon now. He'll fix you up in no time. Gosh, Pop. I don't need a doctor. I'm all right. Of course you don't. But we'll let him have a look just to be sure. What do you say? Think you're good enough to take me? Pop, I don't feel like playing. Well, sure, son. Who are we kidding? I'm no match for you anyway. Oh, what did the doctor say? He's not here yet. Well, how does the boy feel? Is there anything I can do? Relax, Doris. He's not your kid. And so it shouldn't make any difference. Is that it, Marty? Look, let's not make a big thing out of it. That the way it's supposed to be? Take. Always take and never give. Like you've taken from Fred Bell all your life and never given anything in return. So you're gonna start that again? Let's make it short and sweet. I don't owe Fred anything, not a single thing. We started out together. We wound up different. He owns the ranch. I work for him. He got luckier than I did. You satisfied? Luckier? What's that mean? It's always somebody else, isn't it? Somebody else's luck or break or fault. It's never you, is it? You don't know what you're talking about. Who do you think you're fooling? Fred Bell, because you borrow his money to gamble with? That make you a big man? Look, can't you see you're only fooling yourself? Will you shut up, Doris? Are you afraid, Marty? If you weren't an old friend of Fred's, then what? Where would we go? And who would you have left to blame? Me? I'm better off listening to Fred Bell than I am to you. And just as soon as Doc Leonard says OK, I know where the trout are biting. How does that sound, Johnny? Swell, Pop. Oh, big fellas, too. Real whoppers. Well, we gotta get... Be right back, son. Hey, am I glad to see you, Doc. <sighs> Car trouble, Fred. If it wasn't for Mr. Matthews here, it'd still be waiting there. Oh, uh, Fred Bell, Dan Matthews, Highway Patrol. All right, Mr. Sir. Matthews. Johnny's in there, Doc. Hey, you mind waiting, Mr. Matthews? Not at all. Give me the name and number of your garage. We'll have them pick up your car for you. I sure appreciate it. Sims Garage. The number's 112. If they want more than $5 for it, tell them to junk it. One, one, two, please. Hi. Hello. Is uh, that your car outside? Yeah, I gave the doctor a lift. I'm Dan Matthews, Highway Patrol. I'm Marty Gower, Mr. Bell's foreman. How are you? Oh, excuse me. Sims Garage? I'm calling about Dr. Leonard's car. He had a breakdown on the highway. What? All right, you do that, will you? Must be his little girl. She's going to get her father out from under her car. Let's have another look at that leg, sir. Huh? When did you say you stepped on that nail, Johnny? Day before yesterday. Mm -hmm. It's nothing. It's... How'd you treat the wound, Fred? I washed it good, 
Put iodine on it. Doc. Oh, fine, fine. Won't be too tough to stay out of school a couple of days, will it, Johnny, huh? What is it, Doc? Fred, I'm gonna give it to you straight because we haven't time for tact. We're in trouble. That boy waited too long before reporting the wound. Doc, what is it? What's wrong with it? Gangrene. Gas gangrene. It's a rare form, but it happens. Gangrene? Now listen, Fred. I know how you feel. But if that boy sees you panic, he will too, and he can't afford that. Now please. We're fighting for time. I've got to have a serum. And we're pretty remote here. Until I get that serum, that boy's leg is going to be more painful and more swollen. But what do you do? You just can't... Uh, wait a minute. Get me 314. Druggist. Now, don't get your hopes up. It's a long shot. Hello, Cully. Doc Leonard here. Have you got a gas gangrene serum on hand? You're looking. Huh? You have? No. No, I can't use it. Sorry. Now, thanks anyway, Cully. I was afraid of that. Expired a year ago. Where can we get that serum, Doc? Clark Medical Center's our best bet. They'd have to put it on a plane to Mason City. Someone would have to drive it here. It's a long drive. Well, if we're fighting time, let's do it right. Get your hat. Come on. That'll save time all the way around. I think the only way to save time is to rush that boy to the hospital. I wish it were as easy as that, but he can't be moved. It's important that he stay quiet. Doctor, exactly what are his chances? The only real chance we have is that serum. He's got to have it, and he's got to have it in a hurry. In a matter of hours, he'll become toxic, and he'll die. Maybe two, maybe six, but hours. The minute that toxin reaches his nervous system, nothing will help. Well, what do you want me to tell Clark Medical? Have Dr. Herbert Bronson put 100 cc's of gas gangrene serum on the plane to Mason City. Somebody will have to be in Mason City waiting for it. I'll do better than that. 2150 to headquarters. Headquarters by. Contact Clark Medical. Have Dr. Herbert Bronson put 100 cc's of gas gangrene serum on the first available plane to Mason City. Notify me the plane's ETA. Then have 3822 pick up the serum, deliver it to... Just a minute. Hold it, what? The last three miles has taken a beating from the floods. The back road's a lot faster. If one of us is waiting for him at the Colton turnoff. He's right. At 3822, meet me at the Colton turnoff with a serum. It's code three all the way. Be sure to notify me the plane's ETA. 10-4? Ten 10-4. Four. Ten four. Yeah, you know your way around in an emergency. At least that gives us a chance. Anything else we can do, Doctor? No, I don't think so. I'll have Doris Gower come up here. At least she can help keep the boy calm. Just get back with that serum as quick as you can. I'll start loading the boy up to penicillin. There's really no need for you to make the ride, Mr. Matthews. I could pick up the serum and streak right back here. I know these roads like a book. Fine, then why don't you ride with me? Okay, but uh, weren't you gonna wait to find out when the plane gets to Mason City? That's what radios are for. And this is one time nobody could afford to be late. Hop in. Less than an hour later at the Mason City airport, a highway patrolman awaited the arrival of the desperately needed serum. Once the priceless package was in his hands, his job then became the saving of minutes. As many minutes as he could possibly gain on the 40-mile race to the Colton turnoff. At the designated meeting place, Dan Matthews and Marty Gower waited impatiently. Keeping them. They could have walked that distance by now. It's a rough road, Fred. Give them time. It's just that everyone's doing something, helping. Everyone but me. I don't know what to do. The truth, Doc, is Johnny any worse? I want to know. Now, listen, Fred. One patient is enough. Marty here? No. No, where's the serum? Serum's gone. So is Marty. Oh, 
Fifteen minutes later, under the capable treatment of Dr. Leonard, Dan Matthews was able to tell what had happened to him. It was an incredible story, one which left the doctor, Doris Gower, and Fred Bell speechless. But I don't understand. How could a thing like that happen? You know as much about it as I do, Mrs. Gower. It was a rough road. I had my eye on it every second. I didn't see it coming. You say Marty suddenly grabbed the wheel and twisted it to the right, deliberately? It was no accident. I slammed on the brakes, knocked myself out. When I came to, Marty was gone, and so was the serum. But why? Marty wouldn't do a thing like that. Lady, he did it. It's crazy. There's no reason. What did I ever do to him? Wherever he is, he's got Johnny's life in his hand. Doesn't he realize that? Mr. Bell, I'll get on the radio and send for more serum. But the time, you I'll said... call in right away. What are we going to do, Doc? You've got to help, Fred. Now, you go on in there to your boy. Uh, get that look off of your face first. Now, no matter what he asks you, be light and offhand, you understand? You go in too, Doris. But, Doc, it couldn't be true about Marty. Doris, please go in. That serum, Doc, do you really think they'll now, get you? One thing at a time, Fred. What you do in there is important. Fast as possible, 10 4. You order more serum? Yeah. Level with me, Doc. Can the boy last that long? I doubt it. But we haven't any choice. What else can we do? Well, the only thing I can do is try to find Marty Gower. Uh. What is it? I'll ask the same question Fred did. What sort of a man would do this? Well, let's ask his other question first. Why? All right, then, why? Well, there's a lot of possibilities. Some of them are pretty rough, but you keep running up against them all the time. Name one that makes sense. Revenge? Fred and Marty have been friends for 11 years. How about money? Why? Well, Bell's a wealthy man. People have been held for ransom. Why not the same thing with serum if it's badly needed? Oh, no. Well, these are possibilities, and you ask for them. Look, Doc, you and I work a lot alike. You look for symptoms, I look for motives. This time, we're trying to beat the clock. Well, that makes it rough. What are you going to do? The only thing I can do, try to find Marty Gower. What is it? His leg. It's so swollen. He... He doesn't complain. Doesn't say a word. Just lies there holding Doris's hand. I'm scared, Doc. I've never been so scared. Everybody's doing all they can, Fred. Matthew's out looking for Marty right now. Doc. You better stay out here for a while. Doc. I'm sorry. What for? You're just a man that's worried about his kid. Do you know of anything else more logical? Twenty-one fifty to thirty-eight forty. Thirty-eight forty. Come in twenty-one fifty. My ten twenty is two miles past Rollins Fork. You headed this way? Thirty-eight forty. My ETA is less than ten minutes. You know the back road from the Colton Turnoff to the Bell Ranch? Know it well. Meet me one mile into the road from the Turnoff. You're going to be there ahead of me. I have something else to do first. Ten four. Ten four. The close cooperation which exists between various law enforcement bodies is in itself the best guarantee of keeping the peace. And this time was no exception. 
At the local sheriff's substation, Sheriff John Cook proved to be the single law enforcement officer for the large, sprawling rural area. He was eager to help in any way he could. This kid at the ranch, he's going to die unless we find that serum. Now, before the crack-up, we had the serum in the car along with Gower. Now, Gower and the serum are missing. We've got to find him. That's a terrible thing, Mr. Matthews. Terrible. How about this Gower? You ever had a run-in with him? Has he ever been off base? No. He gambles a little, but that's about all. It's a rough deal, isn't it? No starting place. You've got to make one. That clock keeps moving. What do you want me to do? Well, from the Colton, turn off to the ranch. As many men as you've got, fan them out through the area. See if they can pick up a sign of Gower, a trail, anything. It's a big area. It's going to take time. We're fighting time, Sheriff, especially a 10-year-old kid. I'll get on it right now. OK. Headquarters to 2150. 2150, bye. Have information you requested. ETA of Flane in Mason City is 140. That's NG. Look, run a make on Marty Gar. Get back to me as soon as possible. 10-4. 10-4. Highway Patrolman Abel was waiting when Dan Matthews reached the designated spot on the back road. Matthews quickly filled the patrolman in on Martin Gower's strange behavior. I'm afraid I can't give you any more on Gower than the sheriff could. Quiet enough, fellow. I never had any beef with him. Nothing else, huh? I know Gower's wife better than I know him. She's a local. Grew up here. Bell and Gower are from up north originally. If it helps any, the wife is a good girl, intelligent, well-respected. Yeah, I know. I met her. Never figure her getting mixed up in anything like this. How can you figure anybody getting mixed up in a thing like this? Look, here's where we jammed on the brakes. Then we skidded over to here. Now, in this rain, it's anybody's guess. Those could be Gower's footprints caught up into the hills. Now, let's hope not. Only fields and hills in this direction. You need an army to find it. Any luck? I was just going to ask you that. I got about 10 men working in the field now. More as soon as they get here. We're branching off at the turn off and working north, like you said. Well, I appreciate it, Sheriff. As long as you're covering here, there's something I can try. I'll be at the Bell Ranch if you want me. You stay here and give him a hand and meet me there. I want you to lie still, son. If you want anything, ask for it. But you need rest, you understand? What's the matter with me? Am I? You just have a little bug, son. We're going to knock it on its ear. Why does Pop look that way, then? So scared-like. Well, no father likes to see his son sick in bed. Now, the best way for you to help your Pop is to stay perfectly still and rest. Do you understand? I want to know where your husband is, where you think he might be found, some of his friends, some of the places he might be. Look, I've got to know this fast. There's no need to tell me how short time is. Well, I, I don't know. This isn't like the city. There's no place to go. Marty's always on the ranch. Look, what you're thinking is wrong. Marty is Fred's friend. He, well, he loves Johnny. He wouldn't do this to him. Thanks, anyway. Don't you see? Marty wouldn't do a thing like this. No. He did this. Anything? Nothing. I know, I know. Don't do that. What is it? Maybe I'm pressing, but I keep thinking of that big rut in the back road. That could change everything. How? Well, maybe Marty saw it before I did, and he yanked the wheel to make me miss it. Well, why would he disappear? Where is he? Well, I got hurt. He could have got hurt, too. He could have been making for right over there. Let's go. Let you try over there. Mr. 
Matthews, come here, quick. I'll get that package out of the house. I'll take care of it. The package. It's on the way, Gar. Don't worry. Broke this on dashboard. Couldn't drive. Couldn't bring you to. Been trying to get package to house. Keep passing out from pain. Kept trying. Nobody could have tried harder. Nobody. I'm... I'm grateful, Mr. Matthews. I can never tell you how much. No matter what happens in there. Marty Gower deserves all your thanks, Mr. Bell. And look, everything's gonna be all right in there. Just keep believing that, will you? Ten years old. The package was in good shape, the dry ice held. Doc's sure of it. Doc? It's gonna be rough for a while, Fred, but he'll make it. That's definite. Thank heaven. Can I give you a lift, Doctor? I sure appreciate it. All right, let's go. Well, let's watch out for those holes in the road this time, eh, Dan? <laughs> Patrol story next week is a very unusual one. We hope you'll be with us. Until then, remember, the clowns at the circus, they're real funny. But on the highway, they're murder. This is Roderick Crawford saying see you next week. any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state law. missing person may be tracked down because his personal history and habits are known. But when he has no predictable habits, the problem is difficult and becomes dangerous when those unpredictable habits are mixed with uncontrollable homicidal tendencies. Haldor Mattern, an ordinary appearing man with extraordinarily strong hands, was such a person. The search for missing persons is a police function which the Highway Patrol is uniquely equipped to perform by reason of its mobility and widespread jurisdiction. This 
is where we found the last trace of him. The hat was lying right about there. Doctor, when is your first missing? About an hour ago. Can you give me his full name and his description? Well, his name's Halder Mattern. He's about 5'11", 160 pounds. He's about 54. He's gray hair. He's wearing the regulation uniform, you know, the gray pants and the gray shirt and yeah. sneakers. Yeah, he could have gone any place, up and down this road or into the woods here. Well, I brought his sweater. They said to bring something to give the dogs a scent. Come here. Twenty-one fifty to headquarters. Go ahead, twenty-one fifty. I'm on the north side of the Riverhead Mental Hospital. Here's a description of the escaped patient. Hold on. Go ahead, doctor. 511, 160. 511, 160 pounds. Gray 854. Pants, gray pants, shirt. No hat and sneakers. No hat and sneakers. Have you got that? All right, hold on. I'll get back to you. They just brought the dogs in. 10 4? 10 4. Here, let me have these. Take these. The dogs will get the scent from them. Well, don't the dogs have to smell something that actually touches the ground, like shoes? No, they'll pick the scent out of the air. Now, look, tell me more about this guy. His family, where he's from, who he knows on the outside. Well, he has no family. He was brought to us after an army medical discharge. We only know that in this confused state of mind, you can't tell what he's liable to do, what quirk his mind will take. But he tends to violence if triggered off. Now, what's the trigger? Well, the thing that triggers him off is usually his hands or violin playing. We, we do know that he was a frustrated violinist. We think that's what started all his illness. What set him off this time? Same thing as last time. One of the patients at the hospital didn't believe him. You see, Manon tells everyone that he's given concerts at Carnegie Hall. The cunning of Haldor Mattern asserted itself again. Suspecting that bloodhounds would be brought into the search, he hit upon a simple ruse. He very carefully backtracked in his own footsteps from the water to the road. He knew that his scent would stop at the water, and he hoped that his pursuers would believe that he had entered it in an effort to elude the bloodhounds. heading for the highway on the other side. Have somebody bring my car around in case he gets through. Come on. So, you live in Stanfield, huh? Well, I'm glad to take you in. My farm is just back about 40 miles. Say, you know Mrs. Eileen Haley in Stanfield, a widow? Imagine me at my age, traipsing off on a 500-mile trip with a widow I've never seen. <laughs> Well, mister, it's, uh, oh, see, I, uh, your name slipped me. Mattern. Halder Mattern, the violinist. Well, sir, seeing as how 500 miles is a bit more than I care to drive myself, well, I got this letter from this friend of mine I'm going to visit. I got it right here, you see? You know, asking me if I'd like to share the drive with this friend of his, that's just Mrs. Haley. Well, sir, I just jumped at the chance. Of course, I didn't just come right out and say, why, well, sure, I'd be glad to take her. Uh, Oh, sir, Mrs. Haley and me, we just kept writing back and forth to each other, you know, uh, uh, finding out about each other a couple of weeks. Uh, you see, I don't want no uh, long-winded woman burning my ears for 500 miles. No, sir. <laughs> but uh, she sounds nice, real nice. Plays the piano, so she wrote me. on your fiddle. Why? Well, that hand of yours. Uh, gosh, you know, I, I caught my hand uh, in a gear once and uh, uh, jumped like that for more than a year. My hand does not jump. Oh, well, it sure does. My hand does not jump. Well, mister, I'm not blind. How could I play the violin if my hand jumped? 
Are you sure you, you can uh, play the fiddle? They went in here all right. Pretty good swim across that lake. Well, he might have gone upstream or down to throw the dogs off. Let's try it this way. Right. Come on, let's... No luck. Well, he didn't come out down oh. there. I right, try it up that way. How far up you want me to go? I don't know, about what about a half a mile? Right. Come on. <laughs> I'm afraid, Mr. Wilson, I won't be able to talk intelligently about your work, farming. My field is music. I teach the piano now and once upon a time played with the Dallas Symphony Orchestra. I will expect you about noon, Friday, September 8th. I'll be ready. I'm too old to keep gentlemen waiting. James Wilson, RFD 26, Glenville. Born December 20th, 1900. Height 5 feet 11. Weight 160. Eyes blue. Hair gray. James Wilson, you're my friend. You're going to help me to get away from here. too, Mrs. Haley. out of the stream that way. Call from headquarters. About what? Dead man's been found in the brush about three miles up the highway. A farmer named Roback phoned and he's at the scene now. That could have been Madden or somebody you met. All right, keep looking. I'll go up the highway and take a look at the dead man. If you find Mattern, remember he's a mental patient. Try not to excite him. Excitement can trigger him off. I'll try not to.
believe in being on time. So do I. Uh, you are, Mr. Wilson. Mrs. Haley? You don't look exactly the way I expected, but... but I guess I don't either. Shall we go? Oh, allow me. I'm a farmer. We're pretty strong. <laughs> We both couldn't go, so we drew straws. I was the lucky one. that a dead body had been found three miles from where the bloodhounds had lost Mattern's trail, Dan Matthews feared that he would find the first victim of Mattern's homicidal mania. It's not Mattern. Looks like he's got a broken neck. What can you tell me about this? Not much. I was coming down the road, and this black sedan pulled out of the brush, almost hit me, and kept right on going, too, south. I stopped mad in the wet hand, and I figured, kind of funny the way he pulled out like that, so I went over to look, and... Did you get the license number? No, I didn't. Can you describe the car and the driver? Oh, just that it was a medium-sized sedan. That's all I remember, and... Oh, it was a fellow driving. Twenty-one fifty to headquarters. Go ahead, twenty-one fifty. More on the Madden case. A little unit south of Riverhead. Madden might be driving a sedan. What color? Uh, it, it was black. Black. Send out the car and the lab boys too. Ten four. Ten four. Twenty-one fifty to eleven oh three. Go ahead, twenty-one fifty. Check with me three miles south on Highway Seven. Bring the dogs. I'm so grateful to you for taking me. If you ever want me to drive... If I get tired. Uh, tell me, Mrs. Haley, were you a soloist with the Dallas Orchestra? Oh, no. My piano playing isn't that good. Pick it up, Annie. Pick it up, Ross. Pick it up, Annie. There's no doubt about it, huh? Uh, he was here, all right. Mason! Make sure nothing such till the boys get here. Mr. Matthews, shouldn't we concentrate on finding Mattern? Well, if we can identify the body, we can identify his car. We know Mattern's driving. All we need to find it is a description and the license number. They're on to something. All right, take them away. Sales receipts. Made out to a James Wilson, RFD 26, Glenville. Madden must have planted these under the rock. 2150 to headquarters. Go ahead, 2150. Madden case. What dispositions been made of the unit south of Riverhead? All roads under surveillance south of Riverhead. Have we got a patrol to Glenville? That's north of me. Stand by. 3240, just outside of Glenville. Have him proceed to Glenville and check on a, uh, a James Wilson, RFD 26. I want a description of him in the car. He might have been driving south on Highway 7 in the vicinity of Riverhead at 11 a.m. today. 10 4? 10 4. I'll proceed south on Highway 7. 10 4. You know, I seem to remember in one of your letters you're saying that you didn't know anything about music. Oh, I couldn't have. Can I see your license, please? Of course, officer. I'll have it right in here. There you are. Do you mind taking it out of there, please? Are you looking for a robber? 
Uh, no, ma'am. We're looking for a mental patient who escaped from the Riverhead Center Hospital this afternoon. Is he dangerous? Well, we aren't sure, ma'am. We, uh, we stole a vehicle, though. Thank you. What's your date of birth, Mr. Wilson? Uh, December 20th, 1900. Where are you heading, ma'am? We're going to Satterville to visit some friends. Well, be careful. Don't pick up any strangers. The fellow we're looking for is rather elderly. We aren't sure how he's dressed. The clothes he has on are stolen. Thank you, officer. We'll be careful. You being so quiet, Mrs. Haley. What were you saying before? Well, I was saying, uh, hoping that he wasn't dangerous. Who? The man who escaped. Oh, I mean, what were you saying about music before the patrolman stopped us? Oh. Well, I was saying that I was sure that you wrote me that you had no ear for music. Nonsense. Oh, oh I'm sorry, but I, I seem to remember. Uh, oh, I've developed a headache. I have an excellent ear. Perhaps the best in the country, certainly the best for violin, the most difficult of all instruments. Do you play? Don't look at my hands. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean anything, Mr. Wilson. I can play with the best of them. Paganini to Menowin, any of them. From the foreman of a farm in Glenville, a highway patrol officer secured information identifying the dead man as the owner of the farm, James Wilson. The officer also learned of Wilson's appointment with Eileen Haley. He immediately reported this and a description of the stolen car to Dan Matthews, who had been checking roadside gas stations and diners in the area. On learning that James Wilson was to have picked up Eileen Haley at her address in Stanfield, Matthews started for her house. Twelve oh one to twenty one fifty. Twenty one fifty by. Described car and woman passenger passed me approximately one hour ago, going south at moderate speed. Man showed me Wilson's identification. 2150 to headquarters. Go ahead, 2150. Matt is going south on Highway 7. He's about 20, 25, 30 miles south of Stanfield. I'm proceeding south. 10 4? 10 4. Why are we stopping again, Mr. Wilson? Uh, it's just easier to talk when I'm not driving. Well, then would you like me to drive? No. And another thing, stop looking at my hands oh, and at honey, my shoes. I'm not. My clothes. No, I'm not. Do you find my hands unsuitable for the violin? No. Then stop looking at them. I'm sick and tired, sick and tired of having everyone look at my hands. Uh, shall we, shall we drive, Mr. Wilson? I won't have it. I won't allow it. I won't tolerate it. Nothing yet. Check every spot between here and from where they passed me. Then they're still ahead of you. Keep checking. You mean you've never heard of James Wilson, the violin virtuoso? At my last concert, I played the Paganini. There's nothing, nothing more difficult. Encore after encore. And you've never heard of me? I have. I have, Mr. Wilson. Then why don't you applaud? Let me go! Let me go! My bow hand! You've maimed it! No! Look what you've done! I'll never play again. They haven't got by us. 
Oh, they must have. They got by the last checkpoint. There's no crossroads between here and there. I know there isn't, but... Look, this is your territory. What do you know about it? Any dirt roads, a farm road, anything? A dirt track alongside the underpass. All right, you stay here. Let's you and I take a look. Come on. And please believe me, I didn't hurt him. Ordinary people never understand. Naming my hand is worse than killing, worse than murder. You've deprived the world of life, my creation of music. Right ahead there. Look. We might be too late already. If she's alive, let's keep it that way. Dr. Hill told me what triggered him off. Now, Wilson's got a broken neck. We've got to get right on top of this guy before he can use his hands. He probably heard the car when we drove up. He figures we're going to pass him. We'll pass him. Why right, do you drive? Slow. for a life. It will be over quickly. My hand is strong. <laughs> is very familiar. Well, that's possible. I, I'm not unknown. Do you ever go to concerts? Violin recitals? Yes. Carnegie Hall? The violin virtuoso. You couldn't be. Believe me, sir, this is an honor. Oh, you do remember my last concert at Carnegie Hall. I'll never forget it. Then would you do me a favor? A great favor. Would you come back with me? There's a certain person I want you to tell that I did play there. He won't believe me, but he will believe you. Would you come? Yeah, sure. Where is it? Riverhead Hospital. You see, I hurt my hand, and they're trying to cure it. How's the other one? Oh, it's all right. As good as ever. All I want for is to have you vouch for me, just to tell them that I did play there. Yeah, sure. We'll go right away. Mrs. Haley, you stay here. Come on, let's take my car. Next week's Highway Patrol story is a very unusual one. I hope you'll be with us. Until then, remember, it isn't the car that kills, it's the driver. This is Bradley Crawford saying, see you next week. Any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state law. Thank you.
The Highway Patrol encounters many different types of criminals. Some are hardened, some inexperienced, and some are reformed only a short time. The temptation becomes too great. On November 7th, Frank Wood, a reformed criminal, was presented with such a tempting situation. How much was he carrying? A little over 31,000, all negotiable. Frank Woods, age 33, just promoted to assistant manager. He's been with the Farmers Cooperative for about five years. And these are branch deposits? Huh? Right. They're picked up once a week and brought to the main office in Grantwood. When was he last seen? Marshville. He left there 10.20 a.m. in route Grantwood on State 14. I'll just see an APB out on Woods in the car. Pay attention to that 14 area. I'd better check him out here. Rush the fingerprints on Frank Wood to state criminal records for a code check, will you? No, you're going to have to pick him up. They're at the Farmers Cooperative. I think I'm on file there. No, no, listen to me. I want state records. Washington won't be able to dig anything up for a couple of days. That's right. Thanks. Attention, all units. Missing person, Frank Wood. Male, white, 33, 5 feet 11, 175, light brown hair, blue eyes. Last seen at Marshville, 1020 a.m., en route to Grandwood on Highway 14. 3822 on missing person. Pick up the search along 14. 3822, bye. Cover from Marshville to Hawk Canyon. 3822, 10-4. 10-4. Did you get the prints on Wood off yet? All right, fine. Now, give me a direct line to state criminal records, will you? No, no, I'll wait. Hello, this is Dan Matthews, Highway Patrol. How about the fingerprints on Frank Wood? What? No, I'll wait. I want them right now. match. Now, look, you're real sure about this, huh? Okay, thanks. Set up perimeter roadblocks. Cancel the missing persons report. Make it wanted. Felony warrant. Get the car. Are you certain this information is true? It's like I told you. His real name is Frank Bacalli. He's been in and out of trouble since he's been 16. Right now, he's wanted in an old warrant, attempted robbery. He's lived in Grantwood for seven years. He disappeared about seven years ago, too. He's a good worker. I, I just promoted him to this job. Did he ever pick up the deposits before? No. No, he's never handled any of our money before. Which one is his desk? I'd like to go through his papers. Maybe he'll give me an idea which way he's heading. He's singing our quartet. He's got a four-hour start. I can't block every road in the state. Which is his desk? Uh oh right over there. Thanks. He's taken dinner at my home. There's no gratitude in a thief. Once a thief, always a thief. Matthews, I want him convicted. Make sure he's convicted. He's a wanted criminal. If he's disappeared with somebody else's money, we'll let the jury take it from there.
Other units stand by to cover the following locations. Use your phone. Send time. The suspect was disclosed to be Frank McCauley, employed by the Farmers Cooperative under the name of Frank Wood. The Highway Patrol describes him to be 5'10", medium build, brown hair, blue eyes, with a receding hairline. He may be carrying a canvas money satchel. I ain't seen nothing, mister. I ain't seen nothing. I ain't heard nothing. <laughs> Please, mister, I got ten, twelve dollars, maybe fifteen. It's all yours. You were gonna hit me. I don't watch your money. But the cops are looking for you, mister. There's a lot of cops around here. <laughs> Attention, all units. Suspect McCauley reported at Midpoint Service Station on Highway 14. 3822, take the call. Roadblock units converge on the Grantwood Hills area. this trail to this point, the dirt soft. After that is decomposed granite. I doubt if an Indian could follow him. You didn't try to cut back at all? I'd have seen him. Well, if he keeps up, that path is going to be in trouble. It goes into Hog Canyon. If he tries to get up either side, we can spot him. I'll tell you what, if you put Baker on the base, I'll have Alan and Tilling cruise the rim. Right. Uncharted on topographical maps, a flood drainage tunnel runs from Hawk Canyon under the highway to the valley on the other side of the ridge. When it became apparent Macaulay had used this tunnel to escape, all units were immediately assigned to the valley area. It became important to know which direction he might travel. Who are you? Martin Rock. I'm pastor of the church down the street. I never had to drop from a pastor before. I understand. It could have been Frank. Your sergeant made uh, quite a mess here. I've just been sort of tidying up. Why, expecting him back? Why, certainly. I might have to take it apart again. Well, maybe I can help you. Just what are you looking for? You knew him well? Very well. I was his first friend here. Has he got any other friends in the valley? Oh, yes. The Browns, the Knapps, the Bradburys, old Hutchins, the Thompsons. You make it sound like he's got a lot of friends. You seem surprised. I checked his record. Is it that bad? Are you surprised? No, not really. 
but there was something. You police, you don't go a lot on faith, do you? Well, we hang up our badges occasionally. I'm sorry. What I really meant was, you don't really have any faith in a man with Frank's record. I've seen hundreds like him. They're all alike. They're from broken homes, crazy parents. They start off by stealing penny candy, and it gets bigger. So we put them in jail, and they serve their time, we put them back in jail. It's a merry-go-round. Maybe jail's not the answer, but that's all we've got. And you don't think Frank ever got off that merry-go-round? With his record, do you? Let me show you something. That night school diploma, certifying that Frank Wood, after working hours, graduated from high school. And this photo, Frank and three others, the local quartet. Looks like they're having fun, doesn't it? What's this trophy? Bowling trophy, third prize. Looks like you almost leveled. Why almost? I've got to be truthful with you. I'd like to believe that he did. Because the more they do, the more sense my job makes. But, but there's $31,000 involved, and I have no choice in the matter. Maybe you'd better see the Browns first. Can I go long? Yeah, sure. Sure, be glad to have you. Hey, Ed. Anybody around? You look tired. I feel like I could go another step. Have you heard about the radio about me, I mean? Yep. It's not true about the money, Ed. You know that, don't you? You know me too well. Come on in the house. Rest up. You'll feel better. Tire blew it went into the ditch somewhere on 14. Walked for miles. I don't know where it was. Well, now you just sit right there. Take it easy. I'll get you a cold drink. Fix you something to eat. Thanks. Anything. Freeze, Bacali. Ed, please. Now you just raise your hands and stay right where you are. Can't anyone understand? I'm not trying to steal this money. I'm trying to return it. You denying your name is Frank Bacali? Uh, you denying they want you on another charge, too? I was Frank Bacali. I'll take what's coming on that old charge. But I'm Frank Wood now. Ed, we go to the same church. I've held a plate to you for the offering. You had your reasons. But a leopard don't change his spots. Now you just stay right where you are while I call the highway patrol. Let me talk to him. I'll do the talking. And I'll do the collecting of any reward, too. Rewards are for conviction. I am innocent. I'm trying to return this money. How are you going to prove that when I take you in at gunpoint? I might have guessed it would be this way. Hello, Elsie? Call the highway patrol. I got that crook, Frank Bacoli, here. No, don't worry. I got my gun on him. And I'm keeping my gun on him, too. Like I said, leopards don't change their spots. Goodbye, Elsie. <laughs> Frank Bacalli's capture by Hutchins was broadcast to all units. Cars 2150 and 3822 responded within minutes.
Yes, broadcast at once. Suspect still at large. Have all units converge on this area. You get out to Bartlett Road. Cover south of there. Got it. He'll be all right. Just a bump. Hutchins had him at gunpoint. Where is it? It had an old shotgun. I'll look for it. Matthews, the shotgun, it's gone. Oh, that's great. Twenty-one fifty to station. Two one five zero. Broadcast this to all units. Suspect still at large, armed with a shotgun, considered dangerous. At thirty-four, thirty-three, and thirty-four, thirty-nine, converge on Bruner Road. Ten four. Ten four. And then he threw the satchel at me and grabbed the gun. Oh, careful, man. It's tender up there. Sorry. You were such good friends, too. Friends? Uh-uh. I suspected him all along. Like the time he helped you with your roof? Yeah, like that. No charge, Ed. No, thank you, Ed. Always glad to help a friend, Ed. A sneaky type, you know. He'll get his now. Yeah, stretching prison will teach him. He'll never see prison. What? He's got your gun. I just heard the radio call. Armed and dangerous. They'll cut him down. Or you'll get your share of the reward. They pay for dead men. The road's cut this valley into neat rectangles. Look, we have a car here, 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 and here. Now, the caller to get out of this area has to cross a highway, and he can't do this without one of our boys spotting him. 2150. 439, just reported suspect, crossed Harvey Road, heading east. 3139, hold your location. Leave me alone, can't you? Your job is not questioning. My job is conscience, your conscience. I've done nothing illegal. Did I mention the law of man? Wait, Reverend. Three eight two two to two one five zero. Twenty one fifty five. Three eight two two. Suspect just crossed Barrett Lane. Still heading east. Twenty one fifty. You meet us at the cutoff. But there's got to be a way of reaching Matthews. Yes, yes. Send a car right away. He's heading for Grantwood Cutoff. Then to Mid City, Carson, and out of the state. Yeah, I'm afraid you're right. Have Allen and Selling meet us at the cutoff. Park him where nobody will see him. I don't want anybody to get hurt. We'll let him walk into a trap. Take him without a gunfight. Let me know when he gets close. Hutchins. I talked with Hutchins. All right, get in here close. Matthews, he was trying to return the money. He didn't steal it. I'd like to believe you, but the evidence is against him. He's overdue when he attacked Hutchins. Because Hutchins held him at gunpoint. Frank wanted to bring himself in. Keep your voice down, will you? He wrecked his car in a ravine on Highway 14. You can check that. We haven't got time. Maybe we'll do it later. Now, look, Martin. He's a known criminal. He's wanted and he's armed. I'm positive he's trying to bring that money in. If you try to pick him up, he's liable to panic. He may even run. He might even turn and fight. Dan, we must let him prove himself. His whole life depends on it. If I let him through now, I might have to start all over again. What about my officers and the people that live in this valley? Do you want me to sacrifice them? What about the faith we were talking about? There's different kinds. There's the faith that people have in me to do my job. The courts decide who's guilty or innocent, not the police. Here he comes. All right, you let him through here. I'll go through the cutoff. That's foolish, Dan. That's an order. It'll be him or you. 
If he goes the wrong way, you're right. I'll say a prayer for you. Say a prayer for both of us. That's the right road. You're up and late, Mr. Hastings. Here, count it. I don't have to count it, Frank. The tar blew out and I... I know. How? The pastor in Matthews. Matthews? Highway patrol. I figured you'd be around. I'm ready to take what's coming on that old charge. The judge will decide that. I'd say you had some pretty good character witnesses. One passenger off the merry-go-round. Well, even one is important. We have the same motto, even in my work. Well, who do I thank? You better check with the Reverend. I'm sure he's got somebody in mind. Come on, let's go. patrol story next week is a very unusual one. We hope you'll be with us. Until then, remember, it isn't the car that kills, it's the driver. This is Roderick Crawford saying see you next week. Whenever the laws of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. detection and punishment of crime on the nation's highways require constant vigilance and selfless devotion to duty on the part of our law enforcement personnel. 
many types of crime and criminals are encountered by the highway patrol in their round-the-clock activity, including unexplained outbreaks of violence. One of the most deadly criminals is the amateur, the frightened, panicky gunman who shoots first and thinks afterwards. The amateur acts on impulse. He steals a car, heads for the open highway, and when he sees an isolated place such as a diner, he makes his decision on the spur of the moment. He is a man afraid, and this makes him deadly. I'll be right with you. First. Money. Oh, no, just a minute, fellow. Take it easy. You, you can have anything you want, but take it easy with that gun. Get the money fast. Don't move. Well, nobody's going to try anything, fella. There's no need for anyone to get excited now. Just, just take it easy with that gun, and I'll do whatever you like, OK? Get the money. It's, uh, it's in the register. Do you want me to get it for you? No. We just stay where you are. Now, there's no need for anyone to get hurt. No need at all. It's right there in the drawer, all I've got. Help yourself. You fool. I'm hit. Do you hear me? I'm hit. Stay right there. Ah! I'm hurt. Help me, I'm hurt! Twenty-one fifty to headquarters. Headquarters by. By ten twenty is Highway Forty Two, Area Nine. I'm heading in. Cancel seven oh four and disable vehicles. Being towed in. Ten four. Cancel 704 this day. Oh, I have an addition for your hot sheet. Auto theft reported 1530 this day. Let's have it. The owner reports an armed man forced him out of car on Highway 41, Area 8, then headed your direction on Highway 42, 1959, Green, four-door sedan. License number, MFG, 015. Mike Fox George, 015. 10-4? 10-4. You see, he's hurt. So am I. Go on, get inside. Well, won't you please let me call a doctor? Now listen, I'm not going to fool around. We're going inside, and you're going to find something to fix my leg. Now move. Pull it tight. You need a doctor, can't you understand? Pull! In 
in the name of decency, won't you let me go to my husband? Please let me help him. Stay here. I swear I won't do anything. I swear I won't. Just let me go, go help him. You can help him when I get out of here. All right, now get this. You don't move, understand? You stay here until I get out of here. You come after me. You try anything and I'll kill you. You got that? You just stay here. Just take it easy. I'll get an ambulance. Twenty-one fifty to headquarters. Headquarters by. Requesting ambulance. My ten twenty. Harmon's Diner, Highway 42, Area 8. Ambulance requested. Harmon's Diner, Highway 42, Area 8. The hot sheet. Mary Frank George, 015. The car is at my 1020. I'm investigating a shooting. I can use help. 10-4? 10-4. Come out with your hands up. Are you coming out or am I coming in? All right, come on, come on, make up your mind. You come in and the lady here gets it. You hear me? I'll kill her. Doris. Doris! I'm Matthews, Highway Patrol. Do what he tells you. Now don't try anything. Just do what he tells you. Doris, can you answer me? Doris! Answer him. Just help my husband. You hear, cop? You hear? Try anything and she gets it too. Doris, you'll be okay if you do exactly what he tells you. Just take it easy, Doris. Everything's gonna be all right. <sighs> Operator, get me Highway Patrol Headquarters, please. Highway Patrol. Headquarters, this is Matthews. Is Ken there? Ken Williams? Put him on, will you? Yes, sir. Williams. Ken, we got a dandy this time. You know my 1020? Join me. I need help, Father. Come on. Right away. Cop, can you hear me? Cop! Yeah, I can hear you. We're coming out. 
Now listen to me. I got her, and I got a gun. You know that? Do you? I keep talking. We're coming out, and I'm going to walk out of here. You try and stop me, and she gets it. You hear me, cop? She gets it. You hear me? I'm coming out. All right, I'm waiting. All right, easy, Doris, easy. Cop! Stand still. Doris, don't move. Don't do a thing. You use that gun and she gets it. You know that, don't you? Answer me. All right, what do you want? We're leaving. You get it, cop? I'm getting out of here and she's going along with me. Please, please let me help my husband. Please let me help him. And you don't try anything, cop. You don't shoot and you don't follow us. And she's coming along for a nice little ride. Leave her here. Oh, no. No, sir, not a chance. She's coming with me. And you try and stop me and I'll kill her. You hear me? I'll kill her. Can't you help him? Can't you see my husband is dying? Please help him. You want a hostage? Take me and leave her here. Not a chance. You heard me. Let her go. I'll take her place. You? Use your head, will you? You take her, we'll follow you. You know that? No. In about one minute, this place is going to be crawling with police. You want her to die? You want a hostage? Take me. I'm a policeman. You think one of my boys is going to take a chance on me getting killed? No. Come on, let her go. You get a gun. I'll drop it. Come on, think. William, twice the protection she is. You got a police car? Yeah, it's right outside. It's got a radio in it. You keep the gun on me. I'll call the patrol. Someone will let us through. Now let her go. Throw your gun away. Clear away. And let her go. Not while you've got a gun. All right, Doris, move away from it. Throw it away. Clear away. Slide it on the floor over here. Move away from him, Doris. No. Do what he says. Do anything. Can't you see? Cotton is dying. Just let him go. All right, take it easy with him. The ambulance will be here in a minute. Ambulance? Listen, no ambulance guys are coming in here. Not until we've gone. Go on, Doris, get him out of here. Help me up. We go. No car and you drive. Sure, it's my car. Where are we gonna go? Move! What's that noise? Cops. Yeah, sure, we're cops. About two seconds, we're gonna be swarming all over your back. What are you gonna do now? Go ahead. Inside an isolated roadside diner, a killer holds a gun on his hostage. Outside in the night, men of the highway patrol stand ready, not daring to open fire. I tried looking in from the side, there's no sign of them. Well, they're in there. Mrs. Harmon spelled it out for me. Who's covering the back? Uh, Kenyon and Riley. You cancel the roadblocks? Yeah, both sectors. It's getting darker. In ten minutes, we won't be able to see a thing. Yeah, I know. Well, let's pull in the cars, use what we can. You want to get started? All right. Oh, Ken, does the wife know anything about this guy? Any identification, something like that? <sighs> no, just one thing. What's that? He's nervous. Too nervous, from what she says. That's some panicky amateur. Yeah, with a gun on his hand.
Here's a horn if you want to use it. Thanks. Still no sign from inside? No, and I'm going to keep my eyes on that door. Well, what do we do now? We wait. There's a light switch on the wall, you know. Just, you just leave it alone. All right, come on, what now? You tell me. Your leg body? Huh. Get out of it. You're going to turn it, get on it. Cutting circulation off. It's all right. It's all right. You sure now, huh? You got a slug in it. Oh, that's just going to be dandy. All right, shut up, you hear me? Shut up. I'm shut. This is Sergeant Williams. I've got two squads here. Three more units on the way. I've got blocks on both ends of the area. Everything we need is here. I've just checked the whole layout, and we're ready. We're ready any time. And now what do you do? I don't care what's out there. We're still going to get out. Why don't you tell me right now how? On the way you said. They won't let you get hurt. We'll just walk out there and get in your car. They won't try a thing. What are you going to do with my car? Go where, where I was going before with this woods. Anything. I haven't got much of a plan, have I? I don't need any. You drive, that's all. I'm safe with you. What happens when I'm through driving? Come on, use your head. I can make it. You think you're just going to get out of my car and walk away? No. I'm still going to get out. Now, listen to me and listen good, because I'm going to tell you the time of the day. I know you and your type. I know them inside out. You're punks. You're amateurs. I don't want to hear anymore. You drive in, pull a job, you get nervous and panic. Then you start shooting. You know something else? You're going to shoot again, too. You're a trigger-happy punk. Shut up! That's it, boy. Panic and shoot. That's your only way out. That's the only thing you know. I'll kill you. I swear I'll kill you. Why don't you try it? Three shots. I just checked the whole area. We can close in the minute you give the signal. Shall I break out the tear gas? Not yet. We can't take the chance. A shock like that would trigger him for sure. Well, shouldn't we close in then? <sighs> now Dan figured it this way. He knew it was going to develop like this when he offered to take that woman's place as a hostage. Figured it how? Figured on sweating him out. That's the only real chance he has. We know he threw down his gun. Well, the killer didn't. We just heard the shots. Yeah, but I've got to give him all the chance he needs. It's the only way I can play it. Mr. Matthews, this is Williams. I'm holding up our attack. Show yourself if you're not hurt. If you're not hurt, come to the window. You hear that, punk? It's the police. This joint's surrounded. This is your plan. You want to walk out here alive? Let's go. Wait. Wait for what? Wait. I'll tell you one thing right now. You've got one chance. Do you hear me good? One chance. Come on, let's go. One chance. One. Mr. Matthews, if you're not hurt, signal to us from the window. All right, this is my last warning. I want to see Dan Matthews now. You said there was one chance. Nobody's going to shoot until you do. Now, you're not a killer. Let's keep it that way right now, huh? No, I, I killed him. You killed who? Well, the guy in here. Cotton's not dead. They took him away in an ambulance. He must be dead. No, he's not dead. Now, you listen to me good. I'll prove you're not a killer. How? I'm going to walk out this door. Or you got a gun on me. You keep it on me. Keep it on my back. I'll get proof from my boys. Tell them I got a gun. They know this. Hey, kid! Throw the spots in the doorway. Yes, sir. Call headquarters about Cotton Harmon. I want to know if he's going to live. Yes, sir. Dennis, call headquarters and check it out. 3110 to headquarters. Headquarters, by. Check the hospital and give me a report on Cotton Harmon's condition. I'll stand by. 10-4. Headquarters to 3110. 3110, by. Here's a report from the hospital. Head 
headquarters says Harmon has an even chance. I can't. Let's have a report. I want a good allowed. Mr. Matthews. All right, let's hear it. The hospital says Harmon has better than an even chance to live. Repeating. The hospital says Harmon has better than an even chance. All right, you hear? Close the door. Close it! Well, that was our chance when the door was open. Look, he asked for the report and I give it to him. If he'd wanted gas, he'd have found some way to tell us. You know, gas might be the one thing that started him shooting again. Well, what does he want then? What's he trying? The only thing he can try. All right, you hear that? You're not a murderer. You're not facing a murder rap. Come on. I don't want to hear anymore. Just stay there. Would you believe me now? My boys and I are trying to help you. I don't want to hear anymore. You don't, huh? Stay there. Okay. I won't stay here. I'll sit down. All right, kid. Starting right now, this is the payoff. Now, listen to me good. Think I'm going to be a chauffeur? Drive you around for miles and let you shoot me? No, not me. Uh, don't move. All you want to do is get away, punk. Well, you're not going to. Watch me. Watch me. Don't take your eyes off me now. Don't move. Remember one thing. Remember this. You're not a killer. You pull that trigger, you will be. And I guarantee in 10 seconds, you'll be dead, too. How do you hear me good? I'm telling you, I'll kill you. I'll kill you. Another thing. You and that gun, they're not giving me orders. All right, now watch me, punk. Watch me. I'm starting for you. I'll kill you. Don't move. Get back, please. Get back. Get back. Oh, come on. You got I'll kill you. I know your type. Come on, I know your type real good. Get back, please. Hold your fire. Hold him here. Have a cigarette? Yes, yeah, sure. to join me. Thanks, I will. You know, it's a nice night. I think we're going to have a full moon. Yeah, it looks like a nice night. patrol again next week. Until then, remember, if you care to drive, drive with care. This is Roderick Crawford saying, see you next week.
large and small, are bound together by more than three million miles of roads and highways. It is the responsibility of the Highway Patrol to safeguard the rights of citizens to free, safe, and unrestricted use of these millions of miles of thoroughfare. To most Americans, the highways lead to jobs, to vacation spots, or to families and homes. To a very few, like Stan Warren, a highway is not a means of approach. It is an avenue of escape. Sorry, I didn't hear you drive up. I had my radio on. Fill her up for you? You get this. Say, uh, could you tell me the best way to get to Huntington? Huntington? Now, your best bet is stay on this dirt road till you get to 19 and turn north. You'll see the road markers. Well, I'd appreciate a road map if you have one. Now, we only got some wildflower maps. Wildflower maps? Well, I guess you're a tourist. Yeah, they show places on the desert you can see wildflowers, but they don't show Huntington. Won't do you much good. Oh. Well, let me have one anyway. After I pick the wife up at Huntington, we might drive back over the desert next week on our way home. Oh, sure. Yeah, there's something to see, so they tell me. Personally, I wouldn't know a wildflower if it bit me. <laughs> you and me both. But the wife will get a big kick out of the trip. Three dollars each. Then there's your map. Hope you and your wife enjoy the trip. I'm sure we will. Thank you very much. The Highway Patrol has released the following description of Stan Warren, wanted for questioning in the murder of Virginia Dorn. Warren is 5 feet 11 and weighs about 160 pounds. He's described as being habitually well-dressed and well-groomed. He's probably armed and dangerous. The suspect may be driving a two-tone convertible, license number 2S68040. If you have reason to believe you've seen this man, contact your local police, sheriff's office, or highway patrol. On the national scene, the department... Operator? Operator, give me the highway patrol. The gas station attendant advises that the suspect headed east toward Highway 19. 10-4. Put out an emergency APB. Alert all units at Huntington, Red Rock, and Bitter Creek. 10-4. You know, that description fits more in the car cinches it. Yeah, but according to the report, the attendant said that the man wasn't in any hurry. What's all this chit-chat about wildflower maps and his wife in Huntington? Warren isn't married. Oh, no, he hasn't had time. But he's gonna lie. He's smooth and sharp. He's got to be to be a con man. Con man turned murderer. All right, he won't move too fast. That'll create suspicion. Look, if he says he's going to Huntington, that's the last place he's going to go. With radio stations cooperating with the highway patrol, the fugitive inevitably learned that his description and that of his car was being broadcast throughout the state. He knew that his escape, even from this relatively unpatrolled area, depended upon a quick and unexpected change in tactics. Valley all my life. I never heard of fish on the desert before. 
Oh, this area used to be an inland sea, hundreds of millions of years ago. Mm. Now, we're looking for fossils. Fossils? Oh, you, you mean them big monsters, uh, like in the movies, huh? Well, you're probably thinking of dinosaurs. The fish fossils that we're looking for came much earlier, during the Devonian period. Oh, yeah. Um, excuse me. Number two and four is all we got. The uh, special's all gone. Well, I'll take um, number four. You fellow scientists? Not exactly. We teach at a university. You do? Guess you're um, on an expedition, huh? Oh, I'd hardly call it that. Some people go deer hunting on weekends. My friend and I decided to come out here to the desert and dig for fossils. Sort of a postman's holiday. Oh, how do you, uh, how do you know where to dig? Mostly guesswork. But we heard of a place a few miles off the highway that sounds promising. What do you do for a living, Mr. Uh... Uh, Martin? Sam Martin. I'm just a short auto cook. On my way to a job in Morrisburg. Not due till Wednesday. Oh, well, this is Professor Lamont. And my name's Gordon Ryan. Mr. Ryan is uh, an instructor at the same university I'm with. He'll be a professor next year. Hey, that's swell. You uh, said you're going out in the desert for a weekend. I was just thinking. I could cook for you. Help lug your gear. Maybe drive for you. Well, I admit that neither Ryan or I look forward to my cooking, Mr. Martin. But it doesn't sound like very much fun for you. <laughs> sure will be. Gosh, I, I've never seen real scientists before. All right, Mr. Martin. Go ahead and finish your lunch. And uh, you can join our expedition. scattered patrol units covered the highways, Stan Warren plowed through the desert wasteland, seeking a new route of escape. Say, Professor, you know anything about these roads the other side of the fossil beds? Where do they lead? Uh, some of them lead into the mountains, and uh, several connect with main highways. Across the state line? Yes. That's why Ryan and I came this way. So we wouldn't be confused by that network of roads. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, it's been pretty rough going the past couple of miles. It wouldn't hurt for us to take a little break. Hey, that's a good idea. Uh. I'm ready, gentlemen. Now get this, this is loaded and I'm not kidding. Do what you're told and nobody will get hurt. Martin, I... Yeah. Tie up your friend. Ryan, lie down on the ground. Go on. Are you out of your mind? I said lie down. All right, Lamont, tie him up. Turn over with your hands behind your back. Go on, Lamont, tie him up. If you don't tie him, I shoot him. Now take your choice. 
Intensified search in the Empire Valley region brought one result, the discovery of Stan Warren's car. Well, how about this? He changed clothes and probably cars. Either that or he's still looking for one. Probably still in the area. Let's go. 2150 to headquarters. Headquarters. Go ahead, 2150. Suspect's car is on the outskirts of three wells. Apparently abandoned. Put out an APB to Empire Valley units to examine the occupants of all cars heading east out of the valley. Very good, Professor. You get a PhD in knot tying. Now get in. You're driving. Martin or whoever you are, you can't leave him here. I can't take both of you. And with you with me, Lamont, the cops won't shoot. This is murder to leave him here, just as much as if you shot him. He'll be able to work his way out of those ropes in a couple of hours. Now, let's get going. Come on, let's get this thing moving. Lamont as hostage, headed across the desert, leaving behind him a man bound and helpless. Following the discovery of the abandoned car, a methodical check was made in the small town of Three Wells as the search continued for the murder suspect. Ever seen this man before? No. Never saw him before in my life. Take a good look, will you? Think who's been in here today. He might have been pretty well dressed up. I'd say he's about 5 feet 9, 165 pounds. Wait a minute. Uh, that face is familiar now. Uh, about so tall? Yeah, that's right. Then you have seen him. Yeah. His face and hands were dirty. He looked like he'd been working on a car or something. What was he wearing? Work clothes. Brown, sort of. And a jacket. How long ago did he leave? About an hour ago. With two fellas. What two fellas? A couple of college guys. Were they students? Gosh, no. Professors, uh, he drove off with them. Did they say where they were going? Out the desert's all I know. You know, it seemed awful strange to me. Why do you say that? We were going out to look for fish bones. Fish bones in the desert? <laughs> That's the man, all right. I'm sure now. Thanks. Thanks very much. You know, if he heads out across the desert with the units we got, we can't possibly cover him. He'll make for the state line, sure. He's got a choice of a dozen roads. Block one on either side of the line, and he'll head for another. Those two men with him were stymied. Yeah. All right, Professor. Which way to the road? About a quarter of a mile that way. You sure? Yes. Now get this and get it straight. The sooner I get to where those roads branch off, the sooner you get turned loose. Then you can save your pal back there. If I wanted him to die, I would have shot him. Save me and you save Ryan. Got it, Professor? He's traveling with two men. At the moment, we feel that he's wearing work clothes. Will you contact helicopter unit 141? Tell them we're at Three Wells. Have them pick us up on the west side of town. Except a coyote. Not the one we're after. Helicopter 141 to headquarters. 
Headquarters to helicopter. Go ahead. Request information on units patrolling state line checkpoints. Reports negative. I'm two miles north of Highway 40. I'll continue search. 10-4. over this area. I thought I saw something that looked like car tracks. See those tracks here? No. I see something else that's white that's moving. That's a man signaling. Turn it down. Okay, but that guy's got Steve. You gotta do something. Well, there's three in the copter already. He's not room for anybody else. Suppose you walk to the highway. I'll have a patrol car pick you up. Can you make it? That's fine. Don't worry about me. Just help him on. Okay, thanks. coming out of the desert. Yeah, but which way would he go? East. That's the only way to get him out of the state. That's his best bet. Follow the road east. Looks like them up the road there. Yeah. Miss Ryan's description exactly. Circle out away from the road, but keep him in sight. If we get too close, Warren will know we're after him. How are we gonna stop him? He's got Lamont. An obstruction that doesn't look like we set it up. That's what we need. That truck, when it's around the curve, it'll be out of Warren's view. Circle all around that hill. Keep out of Warren's sight. We'll stop the truck and use it as a roadblock. Do him like and hide in it. And you take off fast. Get the copter up and away from the road. Oh, I get it. The stall truck will get Warren out. But he's clear of Lamont, we'll nab him. Sounds okay to me. We could hover over and maybe you could drop into it. You feel acrobatic? Sure. Okay, you're elected. Good luck.
killer. Start walking down the highway and don't look back. It isn't going to be healthy around here in a couple of minutes. <laughs> You stay here while I see what the trouble is. If you yell out or make one false move, you get this. And so does anybody else who happens to be around. All right, Warren, put your hands on your head. Come on, get out, run! Swing this thing around. at the Lamont again. If it gets him, we're right back where we started. Pour it on. Professor, we find Mr. Ryan. He's okay. Slide in. We'll get out of the truck. You had a rough one this time, didn't you? Just a nick. Tell you what I'll do with you. Keep you up the stunt detail for a while, huh? Both of you, take off the Holbrook Hospital. Sure. I'm Matthews, Highway Patrol. Thanks so much for your cooperation. You've been very kind. Glad to have helped. Highway Patrol story is a very unusual one. I hope you'll be with us. Until then, remember, it isn't the car that kills, it's the driver. This is Roderick Crawford saying, see you next week. Journey back to the village of Mayberry for Andy Griffith. Weekday mornings at 11.30, here in the Time Warp on CKBR.